your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. Hi, everyone, and welcome to week three of high school football on the Scenic Cable Sports Network. Mike Bridges alongside Corey Driggers bringing you Providence Christian High School football in Dothan, Alabama. And uh, about to kick off here, New Brockton. Looks like they're going to do a little squib kick like they kind of do. It looks like uh, Providence touched it, so we'll have to see. They uh, do throw the flag, so Providence, even though the ball went out at the 40, I think gets the ball at the 40. So glad you're with us tonight on Friday night football. It's a night that's not quite as hot as it normally is. Still humid, but Providence coming off a win last week, and this is the part of the schedule, Corey, that you want to take advantage of. Ashford last week, not quite as good, and uh, this week, New Brockton struggling. Yeah, hopefully gain some confidence after that victory over Ashford last week. A big air, a big region win. Here we are again on Friday night with New Brockton hosting them with another region game. We had a bye week next week. If we can go 2-0 and into that bye week in the region, you know, that's, that's just what you want. And coming off the bye, we'll go to Op, so really want to have some momentum going into the bye week and then coming out. So Craig Pittman, the freshman, is having a good year passing the ball. He's back. Ryland Banner in the backfield with him. He gets the inside handoff and uh, shooting through the gap is New Brockton to throw the first play of the game for a two-yard loss. Yeah, 75 on the tackle for New Brockton there. That's Bradley Atkinson with great penetration. He is 6'4", 330 pounds. So we're going to have to get a couple of hats on him to contain him probably. So New Brockton the first two weeks lost 41-20, 40-8. And you look at that defensive line, they've got a lot of size on there. So Wester, or, uh, Providence's front line is going to have real hands full tonight. So second down and 12, Pittman in the shotgun. Familiar look for West, uh, for Providence, and Pittman's going to keep it himself. You don't see that as often, and uh, give him about a six-yard gain on that, so really setting up a much better third down. Yeah, good blocking on the left side, good fake there. The uh, defense drifted left, uh, drifted uh, to uh, Pittman's right as he cut back left. Jared Pettit, 38 on the tackle for New Brockton from his linebacker position. A little more tempo here, third down and uh, six, six and a half here. Uh, Providence has thrown the ball much better. Pittman almost 270 yards passing so far, on track to have one of the best seasons that Providence has seen from a quarterback. And uh, it looks like it's going to be Banner just straight up the middle. He gets to the New Brockton 49, so first real decision of the night for Coach Keith. Yeah, yeah, good run there by Banner. Some initial contact. He kept his legs moving to gain another two yards or so. It looks like we're going to go for it, though. Coach Keith being aggressive early. So it's a fourth down and four. Plenty of time on the play clock. Providence expecting to do well tonight, and so going to try to do that right off the bat here offensively. And the uh, clock going down, and sometimes when this happens, you think they might take a timeout. Hopefully they're going to run the play. Five seconds to go on the uh, play clock. And they do, well, sort of. That's uh, interesting. Pittman gets it. He's going to have to really rush, and he's going to lose everything that they did. That play almost looked like they weren't going to snap it, and then they kind of did, and it was uh, just discombobulated from the outset. Yeah, I couldn't really see what happened. It looked like we, we the clay clock did run out, I thought, by the time the ball got to Pittman's hands for sure. Uh, just a little miscommunication there on the sidelines, getting the play in, and then Pittman not uh, calling for the ball quick enough, and you know, definitely not what you want there. I not only did not get the first down, we lost yardage. So basically, New Brockton gets it where Providence had it to start the game, and it uh, looks like there's going to be a false start right off the bat for New Brockton, and they have struggled offensively, only getting eight. Last week they were down 40 to nothing when they got their eight and had 20 against Op, losing 41 to 20, but again getting those points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they've had some offensive struggles. You mentioned before the game that uh, number one, Gabe Harrington, had, had started out as a running back, but then they moved him to quarterback last week, uh, and he's starting at quarterback tonight for him. He's a 6 1. 
162 pound senior, so he's got some experience, obviously, with the ball in his hands. So he's going to go back, going to pass it, and just going to wing it down the field to his big receiver, who almost makes an over-the-shoulder catch at the 25. Can't haul it in. It'll bring up second down and 15. Yeah, really good throw there to the outside shoulder, and uh, number seven, who's Jackson Whitworth, made a really nice adjustment and actually got two hands on it as he turned. Almost an outstanding catch there, but we see a pretty good arm from Harrington here uh, on that uh, on that throw on first down and long. Harrington came in to play quarterback last week uh, after the starter Balin Foster went out and Harrington was three for three, 41 yards, including a touchdown pass. So he's very capable as a quarterback. It's gonna be an inside handoff that's gonna be really stood up and knocked back. We'll see where they uh, mark it, but it is gonna be a tackle for loss. Looks like another five yard tackle for loss and uh, excellent defensive series so far for Providence. Yeah, no question about that. That was uh, number 35 uh, for Providence is uh, <coughs> Connor Oak. Him. Connor set the edge there. Mims is going to get credit for that tackle, and he did a great job himself. But Connor Odom really was the, the uh, key to that play and stopping it uh, early on. And he stood up, Carius McNabb, and uh, forced him out so Mims could make that tackle. McNabb uh, averaging about 71 yards a game and uh, starts out with a negative five loss, so it's third and 20. And Harrington's just going to go straight up the field. That's nowhere close to anybody. So Providence uh, overcoming the fourth down snafu. Actually is going to get better field position than they would have if they'd held them. And so uh, Providence looking to get their second crack at the ball. Yeah, Chapel Sticker, number 20 there, had good coverage even though the ball was well overthrown. There's really no chance for the receiver. But Cha Chapel was step for step with him there. And we see uh, we've got number 14. Uh, that's going to be um, C.J. Sullivan, I believe, deep uh, to return this punt for, uh, for Providence. Yeah, C.J. plays mostly defense. We don't see him too much on offense, and uh, he's a very good player. His brother was an excellent player at Providence for a number of years, and so big things in store for C.J. He's going to take this punt end over end. He's going to hit it about the 30. Doesn't look like he's going to have much of a shot. Ball's going to go out at the 19-yard line, so if you want to look at the first couple of uh, cracks at it, this is in New Brockton's favor because it puts Providence back at the 19, but more importantly, Providence uh, held them and uh, comes into their second time out here, and we'll see if they have a little bit better uh, chance on offense. Yeah, we gave them really good field position there, put our defense kind of backs against the wall, but they did a good job of standing up with that uh, three and out. And uh, now we've got a long field, as you said. This certainly favors uh, uh, New Rockton with a good punt there. We've got uh, 80, 81 yards to go. Let's see if we can put together a drive here. So Pittman brings them up to the line. First and 10 at the 19, and again, as we said, New Brockton's got some good size on the defensive line, so the offensive line can have their work cut out for them trying to get some holes open. So Pittman with an inside handoff, and that's a perfect example right there, just shooting through the gap and another loss in both defenses. Lots of tackles for loss to start the game. Again, that's 75, Bradley Atkinson, 6'4", 330, and you know, Mike, he, our running back was trying to run away from him, and he just stepped in with a quick quick feet and filled that gap and, and uh, made the tackle. Now, we've got to get a hat on him at least to slow him down. But that, uh, that young man to be that size looked pretty agile. That was Kaiser Sims on the um, carry. That's the first time we called his name. He didn't uh, get much action in the first game. So it's second down and 12. Sims stays in there. We've got three kind of bunched on the right side. And... Uh, that was kind of an inside double, I think that was a double handoff. That was very good and uh, gets it to Chapel Stickler, it looks like, and uh, at least gets it into positive territory, about seven yards. Yeah, trying to do uh, a little trickery. They had, had one guy going left, one guy going right, and then it ends up Chapel back right up the middle with it. Uh, hitting the gap quickly and uh, you know with as big as that defensive line is we are going to have to hit those holes quickly not um, you know, maybe not have success running right at them we're going to have to get to the edges so it's third down and five and it looks like New Brockton's going to call a timeout uh, we finally get a positive play and then we get a timeout so why don't we take the timeout with them we'll get uh, ourselves resituated here you're watching the scenic cable sports network Your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. 
Okay, 7.44 to go in the first quarter. Providence third down and five. Their second possession is going to be an inside handoff, a little misdirection. Chapel Stickler trying to get it. Looks like he's going to come up just about a half yard short. Yeah, good, good play call there. We had some guys moving different, some misdirection going on. We thought we could get into Chapel coming back against the grain, but uh, uh, New Brockton done a good, doing a good job of staying home and making the play there. So it's fourth down and one. Providence lining up once again like they're going to uh, run a play with 20 seconds to go on the clock. In the first week, we did see them do this and then kind of back out and do a quick kick, so we'll see if they do that here. It really is fourth down and a full yard. And Providence calls a timeout. Not quite sure if they were just trying to draw them off sides. We'll uh, regroup here in uh, 7.06 to go in the first quarter. No score. Fourth down and one following a Providence timeout. They are going to go for it. It's going to be an inside handoff once again. And just getting it and uh, really opening up a nice hole there is... Uh, Harrison Mims got that, so uh, give him just about three yards on that and a new set of downs. Well, when you need two yards, that's the guy you, you want the ball in his hands because Harrison Mims is going to hit whoever hits him, is he's going to carry him most times or another two, three yards after that first contact. So tough running, it, uh, interesting call, brave call, but hey. Very worked. brave, very brave. Mims had two touchdowns last week, four yards and one yard, and so. Uh, Following it back up here with a good run. Give them a new set of downs. Clock running six and a half minutes to go. Got a little motion, and uh, the motion man's going to get it. Gonna, got a big hole right here in the 40. Gets up to about the 42-yard line. Going to be close to a first down, and uh, one of the best plays that we've seen them run so far. Yeah, that's for Calvin McClintock, an outstanding sophomore. Um, good speed, tough runner. Calvin's just always been an athlete, and uh, that's, that's the kind of guy you want the ball in his hands, make things will happen. We've got a receiver up on the far side. It is Okay, they see him now when he first split out. I thought he might be by himself. Yeah, he didn't want to uh, let anybody know right away so somebody would get out there on him. So McClintock gets 10 yards on that. He goes in motion once again. Let's just try it the other way. He goes inside once again. Going to have a big hole, 10. Uh, give him 10 more yards to uh, two carries, 20 yards. Yeah, really good vision there by Calvin on that play. Of course, it was set up to go to the edge. He sees that the uh, defender had set the edge properly for the Gamecocks, and he immediately cuts it back up for a nine-yard gain. Yeah, so give him nine on that. It'll bring up second. Second down and one, Providence starting to roll. Last week, they, uh, after the first quarter, was able to kind of get things rolling and led Ashford 21-0 in the first half and seeing more of that offensive rhythm tonight. Two wide receivers here to the left. We haven't seen Pittman pass yet. And uh, he's just going to take it himself right off the uh, left side and able to get uh, the first down and more. Give him about seven on that carry. First time we've really seen him run. Yeah, really good play there. Maybe New Brock is not expecting him to carry it that much. But not only a good play, but he had some that was a tough running. He put his head down, and uh, there was a good tackle there by the defender. But Pittman gave him his best shot. Uh, he didn't shy away from contact there. Well, that defensive line for New Brockton averaging just off the top of my head about 260 pounds, 270 pounds, really, really big. So the best way, you're not going to combat them straight on. So get a little misdirection and uh, get those guys tired and see if you can open up some more holes. First down and 10. Providence with three first downs so far on this drive. We see Kaiser in motion. Another inside handoff. Looked like to McClintock. Kind of blown up a little bit and uh, going to lose yard there. Probably three yard loss. Yeah, as you mentioned, trying to do a little misdirection, but there the, it took the that was a slow developing play. And by the time we had it going, you rocked and it penetrated and blown up anything that we were trying to do. It does show you. Sometimes when you get those misdirections, you can go to it one too many times. And in that case, it was a uh, four-yard loss. McClintock upset because he had had two 10-yard runs, and so that hurts his average. We've got a uh, timeout for the Heat, as the uh, officials do midway through each of the quarters. 4.35 to go, no score. Providence driving. You're watching the Scenics Cable Sports Network. Following the Heat timeout, 4.31 to go in the first quarter. The first pass of the game out to Chapel Stickler. Makes a good move inside, spins around, gets thrown down by the helmet. Uh, not sure if that's a penalty or not, but uh, give him some positive yardage and bringing up a very manageable third down. Yeah, had Calvin and uh, McClintock and Chapel uh, split to the left side. Quick throw to Chapel. Um, number four, Calvin McClintock with a good job of blocking for him. Some good moves there by Chapel. Good play call, safe play call. Get some confidence going for Pittman and uh, keep this ball moving down the field. Uh, we've got third manageable now. Well, I think there might be a penalty. Let's see. 
it was a flag maybe they picked up the flag so it'll bring down a third it was a penalty that's what I thought because he was thrown down by his helmet grabbed his helmet when he threw it down you just can't yeah they call face mask okay uh, yeah, it just gave face it's the same thing he didn't grab the face mask but you can't grab the ear hole or any other opening of the helmet so a break for uh, Providence it takes them from a third down and five to a first and ten at the 22 yard line best drive of the game so far and looking to punch in with a first score of the game McClintock in motion, going to take it once again, going to try the right side. It's really set well. He does a nice job of moving his way inside and what looked like a no gain. Give him three. Yeah, no, it should have been a no gain. I mean, they had him stop, but Calvin did a really good job, not only of cutting back then, but coming back the opposite direction even as he made that cut back and uh, to, to make something positive out of what looked like going to be a negative play. So. And very, very patient in there. It could have been easy just kind of run into the guy and let him tackle you. Patiently picked his way through it. So second down now with uh, just about three and a half minutes to go at the 19-yard line. So inside the red zone, we'll see if Providence can take advantage. Another inside handoff, pretty good running there by Sims, running over a couple of guys and uh, going to get close to the first down. Looks like they'll give him five yards on that, going to bring up a third down and one. Now that's the first carry I've ever actually seen Kaiser have this year and really hard running there. I mean, he was looking for contact, not hesitant uh, to put his nose in, running that ball really hard after he, uh, after he took the handoff. So they give him the first down as the uh, uh, two times now, Providence has had the ball right there at the marker, giving him a first down to so a good run there by Kaiser Sims. Let's give him six yards on that carry and uh, first down now at the 12. Another inside handoff. Need to keep going there. And uh, Kaiser looked like he had a good opportunity and a good arm tackle tackling the ball to hold him to a two-yard game. It really was. I thought he was about to run through that tackle for a touchdown or at least get it inside the five. But a uh, good job there by the New Brockton defender to bring him down. And really have not seen Providence runners over the years be quite as uh, physical as him. Christian Durden is very physical, but uh, other runners have been more elusive and faster. And so it's been kind of fun to see Sims so far tonight uh, really being physical with the ball. Yeah, we had some. We, it was one of the fun things about watching Wise Gordon. He would stick his nose in there and run some people over. He was certainly a physical runner during his time. Continuing in the shotgun. Kaiser in motion, but we have an inside handoff, had a little bit of a hole there, and uh, going to be able to take the ball down pretty close to the five-yard line. Yeah, nice play there. Very interesting to see that develop. Uh, they had me fool for sure, and had me brought to fool for just a second. I believe that was number 40, Tyson Smith, who is uh, listed as a, a fullback uh, to uh, take that ball there. And um, here we have third down and what, about four yards? Four, three and a half, four yards. That gives every fullback on the roster a uh, real opportunity now as they're seeing uh, Mims and Smith run the ball. So we'll see what happens here. Third down, they can get a first down without scoring. Once again with the inside handoff and really breaking through the line. And once again, Sims looking like he had an opportunity, but that arm tackle taking him down maybe a yard. Yeah, so much penetration again by the New Brockton defensive line. And we've called his name several times, but 75 just overwhelming uh, our offensive line right now with his size. We, we need to get him worn out uh, for sure. Maybe we can just side by the sideline. We'll, it'll wear on him as the game goes along. But right now he's still fresh and causing uh, wreaking havoc. So fourth down can still get a first down without scoring. Mims comes in to play quarterback. Pittman goes off. Mims played quite a bit of quarterback the last couple of years. Keep in mind he is left-handed if he's going to throw it. Uh, I would be surprised if he threw it. I think he's either going to keep it himself or go inside. And Coach Keith ran down there. The clock was at one. They actually snapped it on time, but Coach Keith called the timeout. So 41 seconds to go. Biggest play of the game so far. Uh, fourth down and four. Harrison Mims in at quarterback for Pittman. He takes it, just going to take it himself, goes up the middle, and man, is it going to be close. It's going to be really, really tight. They may even want to measure this. He did all he could going over the left side, bowling over and uh, trying to move forward. New Brockton's coming on with their offense. Number 10, Mims with Gary they're not going to measure it. They're going to give it to New Brockton and say he was short. He couldn't have been short by half a yard there. Yeah, from this angle, it's certainly hard to tell. Uh, looks like he made it to about the two and a half um, yard line, or three and a half yard line, I believe it was. 
and I think we had to get to the three. So, uh, again, close enough they didn't have to measure anyway. Yeah, from our vantage point, very, very hard to see with the angle there. So, Providence turning it over on downs for the second time tonight. The much better drive. New Brockton now backed up with 35 seconds to go at their own three-yard line. Harrington remaining in at quarterback in a little misdirection here. Harrington was going to keep it. There is a penalty flag. The clock was at zero, but I don't know if it was a delay. So they were saying there was illegal motion to start with. There was motion. I didn't notice it. But if uh, you're going to get a penalty, this is the place to get it because you go from the four to the two. <laughs> yeah. So that looked like it was going to be a Harrington uh, carry all the way. So I can't imagine that they're not going to do anything but run it here to start with. And 34 seconds, they may only one, run one play and get to the second quarter. So Harrington in the shotgun. Once again, he's going to keep it, go straight up the middle, gets maybe two yards, gets back to the line of scrimmage as the clock runs under 30 seconds. Yeah, had a pretty good size hole there for just a second, but Providence closed it up quickly. A uh, couple of guys in on the tackle there. I believe Tyson Smith may have been one. And um, uh, I'm trying to see who the other one may have been. I can't see that number right now. Uh, oh, number 30. Uh, yeah, that's Trey Douglas, I believe, was in on that tackle as well. And you're right, we're going to... So the clock's going to run down and uh, under five seconds to go. We're going to go to the second quarter. Game tied at zero, but there really is a game inside the game as New Brockton has to get out from the shadow of their end zone. Providence wanting to keep them down there and having them to punt out of their own end zone. We'll see how it plays out in the second quarter. You're watching the Scenic Cable Sports Network. Your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. How does the bank make you feel at home? It's actually looking forward to going inside a bank again, where there's a unique feeling of hospitality that's hard to find today, anywhere. It's where they know my name and they know what I need. It's just different than any other bank. Oh, and they even know my favorite kind of cookie. Yep. That's how. Personal attention and unexpected hospitality from River Bank and Trust. Experience it. Lewis Smith Supply is dedicated to offering a vast collection of fixtures, faucets, and accessories for your kitchen and bath. Make your dreams a reality. Step into the area's only Kohler Premier Showroom or see Delta's Brizo Collection for the latest trends in kitchen and bathroom designs. Lewis Smith Supply offers an extensive line of plumbing supplies for contractors or do-it-yourselfers. For more inspiration, come visit one of our showrooms in Dothan or Enterprise. Your family's health is vitally important to all of us here at Center Drugs in Enterprise in Daleville. We provide personal service and answers to your questions because you're our neighbors. It's so easy to become overwhelmed by what you read, see, or hear. And that's why Center Drugs is here to make things clear for you and to make things as easy as possible. So give us a call or come by and see us at Center Drugs in Enterprise or in Daleville. At Babcock Home Furniture and More, we're working hard this Labor Day to bring you big savings. So this year, everything's on sale. Hurry in for huge deals on in-stock premium reclining sofas and matching recliners. Plus, save up to $1,700 on leather sectionals. And save up to 50% on select Sealy mattress sets. Don't miss Labor Day savings that work for you only at Badcock Home Furniture and More. Just right. At Enterprise Paint and Industrial, we carry a full line of Benjamin Moore paints, along with automotive paints and accessories by Sherwin-Williams and ProSpray. You will find a great selection of power tools by Makita and many name brand air tools, accessories, woodworking equipment, and hardware. We are your factory authorized service center and full line repair shop for your electrical and air tools. Newly remodeled, locally owned and operated, Enterprise Paint and Industrial, more than a paint store.
Back at Providence Christian High School, Mike Bridges alongside Corey Driggers bringing you the second quarter action. New Brockton's got it second down and 10, and Harrington's going to run out of the end zone. Makes a nice cut, another cut inside. There's going to be a penalty flag. Not sure if it's going to be a cut block or not from New Brockton, but Harrington did a great job there from his end zone up to the nine-yard line. Yeah, he did. I thought we had a chance to get the safety there for just a second, and uh, Harrington did find that hole, cut it back up, and even though there's a penalty on New Brockton, could have been worse if there had been a safety if he didn't get out of the end zone there for it. So we haven't seen any kind of call. I did see what looked like a low block as Harrington made his way up. It looked like maybe Trey Douglas, 30, uh, may have gotten held. Uh, I'm not sure that that's what it was, but I saw that block too that I think you're referring to. So it does look, well, it's hard to tell. The ball's basically where it was to begin with. And so it is second down and nine. So it probably was a holding penalty, and you get it from the spot, and you go back most likely half the distance. So uh, New Brockton not in any better shape than they were the play before. Second down, and let's make it nine from the five-yard line. Looked like they moved early there on the outside, and so New Brockton really not helping themselves here as they get out of the shadow of the end zone, and then they push themselves back in. Yeah, no question. I mean, very frustrating, obviously, for uh, the coaching staff, for the offensive line, for the quarterback. I mean, this is not obviously you don't want penalties on any part of the field but to have this down in your the shadow of your own end zone is very dangerous and very frustrating and that was yesiah russo who moved early playing out the wide receiver he also plays some running back and uh, has about 71 yards a game rushing so he is one of their better playmakers but at that point it's only a one yard loss so discombobulated once again and on the not on the same page and harrington just threw it up and russo looked like he stopped not 100 percent sure what the play was. Yeah, it looked like uh, number eight there for New Brockton running about an eight-yard curl, and uh, Harrington's throwing the go route. So major miscommunication there, but uh, I guess that's better than a two-yard penalty or four-yard penalty like we've seen in the last couple of plays. Yeah, so actually I think that's Balin Foster who's been playing quarterback. It's a number six. Their numbers are close. It looks like number eight, so uh, he may be playing wide receiver for the first time or a little bit inexperienced there, but a good athlete for New Brockton. Once again, there was movement, no call, and uh, Harrington uh, gets up to about the six-yard line, and that was not a very good series for New Brockton and probably happy just to punt it away. It really wasn't, and that they definitely moved early again. The, the little, little grace there from the, uh, the uh, referee there to hold that flag, but it easily could have been called. But here we go, fourth down. We've got um, 14 back again for Providence. C.J. Sullivan to receive the putt. And so it looks like Balin Foster, who we said was playing wide receiver, also doing the punting. Uh, his first punt was pretty decent, but you can see Sullivan's up at about the 37-yard line, so not expecting a lot from this punt. So here he is. He gets it off a pretty decent rush and, again, straight up and down. And so Providence needs to get away from it. It's got a great bounce for Providence, and they're going to get unbelievable field position. Defense did its job. Now you turn around offensively at the 15. Yeah, really good pressure there by 21, Roman Banner, uh, to uh, – Put a little pressure on the punter there and, and force that error uh, on, on the part of the punter. 21 banners really quick, got really good speed like his brother. So Providence takes over at the 15 last time down, gave it away inside the five on downs, but got some rhythm on offense. We'll see if they can continue to do that. And we have uh, Pittman back at quarterback and Sims in the background, in the backfield. Talking to Mims, who's kind of in a wide receiver set. Typically, we see him in that halfback set, so we'll see what happens here. Pittman's going to go back to pass. He's going to go out to his right, throws it in the end zone. Got a couple of guys, went through three guys' hands, almost had a touchdown, a really good pass there by Pittman. On the money, uh, uh, that, that was a great throw, a beautiful ball. Uh, maybe the prettiest ball I've seen Pittman throw uh, this year. Maybe the prettiest ball I've seen thrown uh, from a province quarterback in quite some time. Odom goes up, really good length. Typically good hands, went right through his hands. I know he wishes he had that one over. So Pittman's got about 260 yards passing coming into tonight. Had two touchdowns uh, passes last week to Chapel Stickler of 28 yards and 23 yards and uh, also had a touchdown pass to Stickler in game one. So he's got three touchdowns passing and uh, we haven't seen a lot of passing touchdowns from Providence over the years. So expecting Pittman to do a lot more of that. 
having some real issues with the clock. Providence is not quite sure why the offense just doesn't seem to be clicking tonight as far as getting the play in and getting set. And uh, so they had to call a timeout, and I believe that's their third timeout. So with 10 minutes to go, uh, they've, uh, the clock is continuing to run, most likely about 10-10 to go here. Providence using their third timeout, but very, very important because you are at the 16-yard line. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, with, with this much time left, you want to have that, that time out in your pocket. Uh, have that time out in your pocket if you can. And you know, there have been some communication issues. Again, we're dealing with a freshman quarterback. There are always going to be issues when you're you're still trying to break in a, a player. And and while Pittman did play last year, this year you can see the growth. You can see the potential. It's certainly there. One thing I don't know if you knew uh, knew this or not. I think I haven't mentioned to you yet, Mike. But last week. Coach Goodson, who's our offensive coordinator, moved from the field to the box, and he's in the box beside us here tonight. And I was told that last week that went really well. The, the, the communication um, worked out really well with him having his eyes up here and be able to see things develop a little more. So we'll see how that continues to play out. If that's if they stick with that throughout the year, uh, if it works, then you know, we'll see. Second down and 10. Two wide receivers here to the right. Pittman takes it, goes inside to Sims. Got a hole, going to work his way through. Thought he might get loose, but still give him eight yards on that carry, setting up a third down and two. Yeah, really good hard running there by Sims, uh, the 10th grader, getting some work. Uh, they're obviously showing more and more confidence in him, and he is uh, showing why they've got that confidence in him as hard as he's running. Providence going quick, going to go right back to Sims and works his way through, going to be a first down. Now first and goal inside the five-yard line, and you can see the line either on the left side or the right side starting to, to open up four or five-yard holes. It is 75 for New Brockton is on the left side or on the, uh, the right side, I guess you'd say from Providence's perspective, and they're running away from him and getting the ball, and uh, 73, I think, is the other defensive lineman that's so good. So once again, just keep going. And Sims uh, really met at the line right there. That was his seventh carry so far of the first half. And uh, Pittman signals a touchdown, uh, not really realizing that was the five-yard line, not the goal line. The boys will tell him about that when he gets over to the sideline, I think. He may hear about that one. Yeah. So it's second and goal and uh, actually lost a yard on that play. But Providence still in good shape. Sims in the background in uh, backfield, and he's been a workhorse so far here in the first half. He goes in motion, going to be that inside handoff, and high-stepping Mims close to the goal line. We'll see if they give it to him. Yeah, nice, nice play call there, good setup. We, we fake it left, everything. We've been going left for the last three plays in a row. Then we come back to the right with Mims. He runs it to the heart of that defensive line, which had, had, they had uh, vacated their positions. and He did get two or three yards there, getting us very close to the touchdown. So it's third and goal from the one. Sims in motion once again, going to go inside to Mims, and he walks right in for the touchdown. Providence on the board first. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Six nothing Providence. Yeah, good job by our offensive line there. 51, 53, that's Charlie McGee, that's Tyler Wilkes. Doing a good job of opening some holes. 61, I believe, is in there as well. Mason Colley, our center, uh, and a good job of um, uh, giving Mims the room that he needed. And once, when, once Mims gets any momentum going, good things are usually going to happen. Yeah, he high stepped in. He had two touchdowns last week, and so give him another one tonight. And then Leighton Hagler coming in for the uh, point after. It looks like he made it. And Providence leading seven to nothing. Last two drives, they've shown a lot more offense. Last week against Ashford, they had over 300 yards of total offense and kind of picking up here against Ashford. I mean, against um, New Brockton. Yeah, good job out there by Hagler. That's uh, this, his uh, third week now kicking. Davis Bolton is uh, typically our, our kicker. Hagler coming in, um, getting some reps, and you know that was a really nice kick. They split the uprights, and that had, you know, that would have been good from I don't know, 30 yards out maybe. Uh, yeah, we've yet to see Providence try a field goal. They've either gone for it on fourth down, or um, sometimes they go for two. Last week they went for two to start things out. So uh, with the kickoff here, sometimes Providence kicks it deep. Sometimes they onside kick. Sometimes they squib it. So uh, keeps New Brockton on their toes. And uh, this is a situation here where New Brockton's got to find some offense. So far have had zero offense in this game. Yeah, they continue to shoot themselves in the foot, just undisciplined, making uh, the, the, you know these penalties, giving uh, Providence yards. Um, you, they just can't do that. If you're going to be successful, obviously you've got to play clean football and they're just not doing that right now. Up from his own 40 -yard line for the Eagles is number seven, 
So Hagler with the kick, and it's just going to be a little pooch kick over to the side, and uh, New Brockton does a nice job falling on it at the 32. If you're a fan wondering why they do that, that's a perfect example. If he doesn't time that perfectly, the ball might hit in front of him, bounce over it, and then Providence has a chance. I say, why not do more of those kinds of things? Makes New Brockton have to handle it. Yeah, I like that. That was really good placement by Hagler. Um, it, you know, gave it, had a little loft on it, and um, landed it just where we wanted, against the sideline. That way, if they, they are able to receive it cleanly. At least we've got them pinned on one side. So good, good directional kick there. So Gabe Harrington remains in as the quarterback. He's going to do an inside handoff to uh, Josiah Rousseau, who's a pretty good running back for New Brockton, but he gets stacked up, and they're going to give him just about three yards on that carry and uh, actually turns out to be one of the better plays so far for New Brockton on the offensive end. Yeah, they uh, definitely something you want to see if you're a New Brockton Gamecock is some, something positive on first down. The convocation of Eagles on the tackle there. And it, I learned that tonight that, that a group of Eagles, I don't know if you knew this, Mike. I did not. Convocation. Did somebody ask you? to use that word? They actually did. Hmm. And uh, I, they, they had to help me out with that. I didn't know that. A convocation of eagles. So, uh. so excellent, excellent that not only are you good in football, a good thespian as well. So there's Russo right up the middle. And I uh, give him a couple of yards, but that's really going to bring up a third down and six. Yeah, that's this is as, as the Providence defense. This is what you want with uh, the troubles that gang, the Gamecocks have had. Uh, third and six is not the the draw that you want to have. It may even it's a pretty long six it looks like. And then uh, one of their better players, 75, who's uh, so good on defense, getting up a little slow there after that play. So it's third down and six. The Providence defense has played pretty well so far tonight. Played very well last week against Ashford. So Harrington's going to roll out. I think he's going to try to throw it and just kind of tries to get rid of it. And uh, almost a play that you don't want to see from Providence. Mims uh, clotheslining a guy. But uh, that play just had no chance from the start. Yeah, it is. And it was designed run in uh, 23. Uh, Ryland Banner was not fooled. And on top of that, Ryland Banner has really good speed. So Harrington was not able to get the edge. He was hoping his receiver, who was blocking, was going to turn around. No help there on that play, though. Good defensive stand by Providence, uh, getting the ball back quickly here after the touchdown uh, to hopefully put up some more before the half. And you have to give it to Ryland Banner as well. He's played a lot of running back. We haven't seen him at running back at all tonight because Kaiser Sims has stepped in, but he's still keeping his head in the game and making good defensive plays. So Balen Foster in to punt. Last time he punted the ball, it was only about a seven-yard punt, went straight up in the air. Let's see how he does on this one. This one's a little bit better, has a little bit of a spiral, and uh, Providence is going to let it bounce. Takes a great new Brockton bounce, and uh, not sure why he touched it right there at the 24, but to Providence's uh, betterment, he did, and so Providence will start their fifth drive of the game at the 24. Yeah, that was a, had, had some good hang time on that one and uh, got a really good bounce, obviously. I think about a 40-yard punt um, uh, by the time it was down uh, by the defender there for New Brockton. So last time out, Providence able to drive down after getting the ball at the 15 and uh, punch it in with a Mims one-yard touchdown. They had momentum on the drive before, so we'll see if they can keep that up offensively and keep that rhythm going. And uh, it's going to be a stoppage re here real quick. Possibly it's the heat timeout. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, Must be a player uh, equipment or something like that. So not sure who saw that or how the referee saw that from back there. So uh, lineman runs off. Another lineman comes on. And uh, Providence starting at their own 24-yard line. You have Sims in the background. Pittman still in at quarterback. And uh, have two wide receivers out here to the right and, uh, and a fullback in there on the left. Playcock coming up at five seconds. Providence has no timeouts. So Pittman going to go inside to Sims, which has worked fairly well. Give him two yards on that carry. Yeah, New Brockton may be making some adjustments. That's a play we've seen quite a few times over the last two drives. Uh, Sims again running really hard, earning some billion time here. So Providence has had a little bit of trouble getting lined up. We are seeing some players that we haven't seen as much here, and so maybe it's just a little bit of tweaking to get them in the right positions.
So a little motion here from Smith. And it's going to be a give to uh, Sims one more time. That didn't work. And actually, he's going to lose a yard, bringing up third down and long. Yeah, uh, while Sims has been able to get some momentum going and ran through some arm tackles on some other plays right there, he had no chance to get any steam built up before uh, three or four Gamecocks had their hands on him. And that's his ninth carry of the first half. And now we have Mims coming in for Smith as third down and nine. We haven't seen Pittman pass quite as much uh, as we did week one and as much as he did last last week and I feel like this could be a passing down here. The good news for Providence is the clock is still running. Mims goes in motion, uh, turned up field quick. They're not going to call that. Pittman goes off to the side, wanted to go deep, has nobody open. It's just going to have to throw it out of bounds, bringing up a fourth down and eight. Yeah, not, not the play we wanted there. Um, they had good coverage, New Brockton did, but that's what you want to see Pittman do. He rolled, he kept his eyes downfield. He, he thought he had something, but he, he held the ball, it wasn't there. And then as, it, as he ran out of room, ran out of time, he threw the ball away, didn't take the sack. So good maturity, seeing some good things out of the young quarterback. And and the two wide receivers that were on the right side here for Providence kind of met in the middle of the field, and that's why he wasn't able to throw it because both defenders right there. So we have the Heat timeout with 5.44 to go in the second quarter. The Eagles leading 7 nothing. coming up with a fourth down and eight. We'll bring it to you. You're watching the Scenic Cable Sports Network. 5.44 to go here in the second quarter. Fourth down and eight for Providence, and they will punt it. So they're in their traditional punting, which you don't see a whole lot. Harrison Mims handling the punting. So New Brockton able to stop Providence after their last couple of drives. A very good punt from Mims. Gets it down, bounces at the 30, and uh, Providence gets on top of it at about the 28-yard line. And so New Brockton actually in that whole sequence there picked up a few yards as they start the drive here at about their own 28. They did, but that's uh, you know, I missed the game last week, but the first week Mims had a really good punt, and that was an outstanding punt. That ball carried about 40, 42 yards in the air, and we downed it about a 45-yard punt. So you can't ask for much better than that out of a high school punter. So Providence defense has played very well tonight, and uh, New Brockton just has negligible offense. Last week they held Ashford to 94 yards, and uh, really Highland home, which is very good week one. The defense didn't really play that bad. More or less a uh, lot of plays in that game. So New Brockton is going to go out, and, and uh, Harrington just has nowhere to go with it. That's a play that just went nowhere, and uh, get a 7 or 8, almost a 10-yard tackle for loss. Yeah, it looks like we brought a corner blitz there with Roman Banner coming in, just flying in uh, from his cornerback position. Really good job there by him. Um, somebody else helped him clean that sack up as well. But uh, Perry was under pressure as soon as, uh, uh, as soon as that ball was snapped. Looks like we've got 18 that's down for uh, Providence. That's Zach Benson, 6'5", uh, 193-pound junior. Yeah, pointing at his leg, and so they're going to take a look at that as they do that. Uh, we'll tell you that you can check out the Scenic Cable YouTube channel. Just search uh, Scenic Cable Network, and you can go back a number of years and uh, check out some of the games that are on there, all the local games, not just Providence. There's Dothan High games, HA, things like that. So you can go back a number of years, and uh, I believe they told us a couple weeks ago maybe like every Providence home game is on there or something like I that. I don't know how far it goes back, but it's quite a bit. There, there are hundreds of Thing, maybe even thousands of games they have on that uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, so check that out and you can see some of the uh, stellar work that uh, Corey and I have done over the years as well. And so uh, if you got some insomnia, just check that out for us. So, but it's an excellent YouTube channel, especially if you like local Dothan sports. Also has basketball on there as well. So second down at about 18, Harrington's going to keep it himself, tries to high step, really uh, give him just a couple of yards, and uh, New Brockton really in a world of hurt here, third down and 14. Yeah, really good hit there. I couldn't tell exactly who was the uh, Providence player that delivered that, but a good job of coming up. Um, Harrington being a good athlete, tried to put a move on in the some, somewhat open field, uh, but a good open field tackle there, and uh, you know, they're just not able to put much together, and now you've got third and 15, and, and uh, you know, uh, the Gamecocks are having a hard time. O obviously, Harrington is their best offensive player, athlete, but he's not getting much help around him right now. 
So 425 to go in the second quarter. Unofficially, as I'm keeping stats, I have New Brockton at negative two yards. So really need to get something going here. So Harrington's going to go back, just going to go straight over the middle. And that's a good pass. Gets it out to the outside. I think that may be to Balin Foster and give them uh, about 10 yards on the pass. And it'll bring up a decision here. Fourth down, uh, probably six from their own 34. I think you. I think if you're the Gamecocks with it being down 7 nothing, you got to punt it here. You don't want to give give the ball over on the 30-something yard line. If you go to halftime here with the set being down 7 nothing after the way they played, that's a victory. Yeah, absolutely. And and they are bringing Foster in here to uh, kick. And that was on the really far side of the field. So uh, not 100% sure if that was Foster or Isaiah Rousseau who caught that. But uh, – New Brockton got some positive yards, and now it looks like that uh, they've dropped a flag here. Not 100% sure. Yeah, not sure what the call is either. I'll say this about the play before. That was a really nice throw. Uh, had some zip on it, got it out, and a good catch. They're waving the flag off, it looks like now. Not sure what happened there. Not 100% sure, too. They called timeout, so maybe he gave them the option to call timeout or uh, take the penalty. So with fourth down and uh, a possibility of being able to at least get – uh, Providence back inside their territory. They went ahead and took the timeout uh, with three and a half to go. We'll take the timeout with them. You're watching the Scenic Cable Sports Network. Three thirty-seven to go here in the second quarter. New Brockton facing a fourth down and six, going to punt it. This will be their third straight punt, and uh, offense really having trouble clicking. Had their best play of the game just recently with a ten-yard pass. So here comes the. Oh, it's going to be a fake punt. Going to go straight down the field. Has a guy open, able to catch it. That's Balin Foster. Gets it downfield to about the 38-yard line. So Providence not thinking fake punt works for New Brockton, and they get a huge game. Yeah, I believe was that uh, uh, six? Uh, was that six? That was eight? Foster. Foster. Okay, Balin Foster. I mean, wow, what a throw! I mean, right on the money. A, I mean, a brave call coming out of a timeout. You know, when you're playing the way they've been playing on offense. I mean, I can see why he would try to take a chance there. Obviously, it was deep in Providence territory. Very risky. But, you know, when, you're, when your team's not executing, you're not playing very good, you got to take some chances. And you have nothing to lose. I believe that was Jacob Fisher who caught that and uh, was able to fight his way down for a couple of more yards. So, by far the best play of the game for New Brockton. Gives them second life here now inside Providence territory. And we have another stoppage. Not 100% sure what this is about. Now we have a uh, flag. They have 11 players on the field, so not 100% sure. This was very similar to what it was before. And then they probably given them a chance at a timeout, possibly. They did it once again. Whatever the play was before, they gave them the timeout. It looked like it was the exact same thing. So not 100% sure. Corey and I are still buzzing from that uh, fake punt. So we're going to take a timeout with them. You're watching the Scenic Cable Sports Network. Under three minutes to go here at Providence Christian High School. The Eagles holding a 7-0 lead. New Brockton coming off a fake punt. Has their best field position of the game. Harrington's going to roll out. Has a guy open. Gets it down. A 12-yard gain. And right before the last two plays, New Brockton had negative two yards. And now they got 22 yards in the last two plays. Quick again, another nice throw. We saw the throw he made on third down a few minutes ago. Was really nice. And then a good toss there as he catches Jackson Whitworth across the middle. Whitworth is a good athlete with really good speed. He's the one that he missed on the deep pass earlier in the game. But uh, Whitworth wheels that or takes that one in and then uh, turns up field for the positive yardage first down again. So now an inside handoff to um, – Josiah Rousseau, and he had a good opportunity there. Looks like he ran into his own man, but give him three yards. And New Brockton, which looked like they were down on the mat, have come off after that fake punt and have some real momentum. Yeah, going to have a little gut check time here for the Providence defense to see if we can keep them out of the end zone. Good job by Tyson Smith, Josiah Moncrief, number 85, plugging that hole to keep that to only a two-yard game. 
So 2.25 to go. Providence leading 7 nothing. Second down and 8. New Brockton's found a little something in the passing game. And Harrington going to go back again. Just going to throw it up once again to Whitworth. And he was open just a little too far. He made a good effort but couldn't come up with it. Yeah, not a bad throw at all there. Again, one that only your receiver is going to make that play. We had uh, C.J. Sullivan, our cornerback on coverage there. Who was, he did get him. He had him by a step or two. Uh, if that ball's on the money, they're looking at six. But uh, fortunately, overthrown on it now brings up a third and long. Harrington's got a good arm and uh, kind of goes back there and hopes to have his guys run underneath it. That time it didn't work and so we'll see what they come up here with third down and eight. I'm certain this is four down territory. Harrington gives it out to Rousseau, and he's really knocked off base there on the side. Gets a couple of more yards, but uh, Providence stacks him up to bring up fourth down and a real decision here. Uh, what is New Brockton going to do? Yeah, somewhat of a surprising call there. I mean, I'm expecting him to throw the ball. Obviously, as you mentioned, he's got a really good arm. They've had some uh, opportunities. They've converted some. And then to try to run it against this defense, who's been good against the run all night. Josiah Moncrief on that left end for us did a good job of containing him, slung him around, and then fortunately had a little help there to finish him off. Yeah, slung him. He got one more yard, and luckily he didn't come off of that to get a bigger gain. Brings down a fourth down and eight. Carius McNabb back in the backfield, and uh, he's going to go out. Looks like a, they're going to try to screen pass. Harrington just running for his life, going to throw it up, and can't tell if he caught it. That was very, very close. Almost an unbelievable catch. Oh, they're saying he did catch it. I, I thought he actually dropped it. Harrison Mims on the cover. His ball's tossed up high over his head, and... Uh, so the official, catch. without saying it's a catch, is motioning it's a catch. That was one-handed, falling down, was able to pull that in on his back. I wish we had better replay for that. So New Brockton comes up with a miracle on fourth down and eight and are really dealing now inside the ten. Harrington's going to take it himself, picks his way through, gets down to the five-yard line. Yeah, good job of filling the hole there by Tyson Smith in the middle to make that tackle because, you know, we, here we're getting tired. I mean, there are several plays running in a row, pressure's on, the clock's less than a minute now. If you're New Brockton, here's what you wish you had one of those timeouts left. Uh, wouldn't have lost them all earlier. So neither team has a timeout. Harrington's just going to go straight up the middle. Providence swarms him at the five. The clock is running, and it'll be interesting to see with New Brockton really has got to get things going here. Yeah, I think here you try to th throw the pass and give yourself at least another play if this one doesn't convert if you throw an incomplete pass because time is running quickly. So 33 seconds, clock running. Neither team has a timeout, so Harrington's going to roll to his right. He's got a man open over through him. He was open, and that's going to bring up a fourth down and five with 28 seconds to go. New Brockton knows how to keep it exciting. No question. He had the little H back, I think it was, there on the out route at the goal line, and he was wide open. Um, I just overthrow, overthrew it. Um, a little more, obviously a little adrenaline, adrenaline going right there, and uh, that pass got away from him. But here we are, fourth down. So fourth and five, the biggest play of the game so far. 28 seconds before half. New Brockton's got 12 seconds to snap it. Not 100% sure what to do. They have no timeouts. They have to snap it. So Harrington's just going to go out, going to go to his right and try to look back. It goes right back over. A great play by Providence. Uh, had nowhere to go with the ball, and Providence takes over with a great defensive stand. Yes, no question. Pressure on him there. He didn't have anybody to go to. Harrison Mims, number 10, comes in hard, uh, ready to make the hit as the quarterback throws it away. So great job by our defense. Gut check there. Um, you know, after a big fake punt, you give New Broughton credit for that, for keeping it alive. But good job by our defense for coming in with the stand. And Mims could have hit him low which might have been a penalty and given him a new set of downs. He did a good job of just hitting him and just kind of disrupting him. That play was really under fire to start with, with New Brockton not really set. So 23 seconds to go, expecting Providence just to run it and let the clock run out. Inside handoff to Sims. He kind of gets bunched up there, tries to do what he can, give him one yard, clock running under 16, and I'm sure that they'll go to uh, halftime up 7-0. That is going to be the case, so the clock is going to run out, and uh, Providence has looked much better offensively in this game. They don't have as much to show for it, and uh, New Brockton had nothing, got a fake punt, and able to get a little bit of offense, but Providence able to hold them, going to go to half, 7-0, and then New Brockton will get the ball when we come back. You're watching the Scenic Cable Sports Network.
your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. Lewis Smith Supply is dedicated to offering a vast collection of fixtures, faucets, and accessories for your kitchen and bath. Make your dreams a reality. Step into the area's only Kohler Premier Showroom or see Delta's Brizo Collection for the latest trends in kitchen and bathroom designs. Lewis Smith Supply offers an extensive line of plumbing supplies for contractors or do-it-yourselfers. For more inspiration, come visit one of our showrooms in Dothan or Enterprise. Welcome to Briars Warren Drug Company, your hometown pharmacy in downtown Enterprise. If you haven't visited lately, please do. You'll see some old friends and meet some new friends too. We know you're busy and we can help by getting you in and out in no time at all. If you need a vaccination, you can get it done right here in the pharmacy. We're here to help you in any way we can because that's what good neighbors do. Briars Warren Drug Company in downtown Enterprise. You can count on us. At Babcock Home Furniture and More, we're working hard this Labor Day to bring you big savings. So this year, everything's on sale. Hurry in for huge deals on in-stock premium reclining sofas and matching recliners. Plus, save up to $1,700 on leather sectionals. And save up to 50% on select Sealy mattress sets. Don't miss Labor Day savings that work for you only at Badcock Home Furniture and More. Just right. How does the bank make you feel at home? It's actually looking forward to going inside a bank again, where there's a unique feeling of hospitality that's hard to find today, anywhere. It's where they know my name and they know what I need. It's just different than any other bank. Oh, and they even know my favorite kind of cookie. Yep, that's how. Personal attention and unexpected hospitality from River Bank and Trust. Experience it. We're ready for the second half of Providence Christian Football on the Scenic Cable Sports Network. Mike Bridges alongside Corey Driggers and uh, Providence leading 7 nothing, and have a little pooch kick there. What we talked about in the first half when they did the pooch kick, you make New Brockton have to try to uh, field that. They did field it, dropped it, but were able to get back on top of it. And so New Brockton gets the ball, start the second half at their own 38. Yeah, I almost had a big play there for, uh, for us on special teams. But uh, as you said, you know, that's why you do that. Yeah, sometimes good things can happen from that. And it's better than the squid kick we've done before where we kick it 10, 12, 14 yards. It's, it's a little better field position. So New Brockton had next to no offense for most of the first half and uh, did a fake punt, got a 27-yard pass, and were able to put a few yards together and had about 78 yards of offense in the first half, all of that really coming on that last series. And so uh, a handoff here to uh, Carius McNabb. He was able to get four yards, and that's some running room he hasn't seen much of today. Yeah, one of the better plays, running plays that uh, the Gamecocks have had all night there. Harrison Mims, number 10, from his middle linebacker position closing quickly to make the tackle. To show you how it is, uh, McNabb came in averaging 71 yards a game through the first two weeks for New Brockton. And, uh, he has a negative one yard rushing now on two carries. So Providence defense doing a very good job. It's going to be a quick pass out and uh, an excellent tackle by Providence. And uh, going to bring up a third down and uh, looks like about a third down and 10. Yeah, Whitworth uh, thrown out him quickly there, looking for uh, some action on that left side. We were looking for a block, didn't get that, and that gave Harrison Williams time to come all the way from his middle linebacker position to close that and make a really good tackle for a loss. So Gabe Harrington has gone the whole way at quarterback, inserted his quarterback last week for New Brockton. He had uh, generally just about 35 yards passing, two excellent passes, one a miracle catch, and uh, there was a minus four yards, so give him 31 yards on the night. So he's going to roll to his right. That's what we've seen mostly. He's just going to throw it. It looks like out of bounds and uh, some uh, extracurriculars going on there, uh, double team action there for uh, Trey Douglas. He gets up okay after those two big boys on top of him. It's a fourth down and ten, and uh, Providence defense doing what it needs to do. Really was up against it there at the end of the second quarter, but came out here really strong to start the second half. Yeah, they did there. Uh, you see uh, uh, the Gamecocks on offense trying to roll right, buy a little time to get a receiver open. 
But um, some decent pressure there coming from our defense and then good coverage by our secondary to not give him anything to throw to. No targets available there. Yeah, the run to the right for Harrington as he kind of rolls out that way. Uh, had one good pass, but that hasn't been a real strong suit for New Brockton. So punting has been a uh, adventure for New Brockton. They come out and uh, the play clock was down. They're going to call delay of game. New Brockton was out there with probably about 12 or 13 seconds to go. The punt game has really been an adventure for them. Uh, first kick pretty good. Second kick went straight up in the air, giving Providence a uh, short field for their f uh, first and only touchdown of the game. And then the third kick was really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll see what kick we get here. And uh, also don't forget, Balin Foster also had the fake punt where he threw the 27-yard pass. He has been a uh, quarterback in past weeks for them. And this kick, uh, not too bad, but over by the sidelines. We'll have to see where they uh, spot it. Providence should have good field position to start the second half. Uh, had really three good possessions. And the last possession they had of the second half didn't go quite as well for them. And then they had just the one play. Yeah, it looks like about a 20, um, referee still stepping off, maybe a 22, 23-yard punt there after he had to field it on a short hop. So not really a bad job of getting that away as Providence was uh, bringing a little bit of pressure due to the delay in the snap and the, the handling of the, of the snap. So New Brockton had the ball to start the second half at the 38, and uh, Providence starting the second half now at their own 46. So very good uh, defense and then field position. So Providence couldn't ask for a better start here to the second half. Pittman still in at quarterback. He gives uh, to the right side the fumble. The ball's on the ground, and uh, I was fixing to say that uh, that was like the first carry, but no, that was the first time we've seen Sims go that way with the carry and uh, puts the ball on the ground, and so the offense gives the ball right back, and we'll see if the defense can uh, hang tight for him. Yeah, that was number 15, Blake Peterson for the Gamecocks. He's a junior, 5'10", 198-pound linebacker. He led them in tackles last week in their game against off, and he steps in there and really put a hat on that ball. You obviously want to see Sims hold on to it, but that was a really good lick there thrown, and tough to hold on to it under that situation. And Peterson's averaging eight tackles a game, so very active defensively for New Brockton. So New Brockton's second uh, possession of the second half, an interception right over the middle. I don't even think that the uh, wide receiver knew it was coming his way and went right to uh, Providence, and they turn the ball over and get it right back. That's for Calvin McClintock from his safety position, just looking at the quarterback's eyes. The, the uh, receiver's running across the middle. Calvin's coming from the middle against the grain from the receiver and just did a great job of stepping in front of that, squeezing it and bringing it down for a big interception and turnover for the Eagles. So that was a route by Balin Foster, who has played some quarterback and wide receiver, and we've seen some miscommunication on some of the routes that he and Harrington have tried to get together. So Providence, one play later, back on offense. Pittman going to go back to pass under heavy pressure, does the wise thing, just throws it out to make it second down and 10. Yeah, he was able to get outside the tackle box there and then throw it away. Good job by number two Pittman. Had nothing available. I don't know if there was a miscommunication on the route to be run, if somebody fell down, but there were literally no receivers on this side of the field that were running routes for us. Yeah, it almost looked like he went the wrong way, but uh, we won't know there. The game has gotten just a teensy bit chippy here to start the second half, so that's something to keep our eye on. Lots of New Brockton players right at the line of scrimmage, so we'll see what Providence does. Going to be a just a quick hitter over the middle. Excellent pass to uh, Stickler, and uh, also was drugged just a little bit there by his helmet. Doesn't look like there is a flag, but that is a nice 12-yard game. Yeah, really nice throw, really nice routing catch by Slickler over the middle. Any time of year I've gone over the middle, you got to be thinking about that safety coming at you. Stickler didn't do that. He looked it in, made the catch, and we got a big first down. So Pittman uh, coming in about 260 yards passing, only had eight in the first half, and that's his best throw of the night, 12, and uh, give one yard run there on Kaiser Sims. And so last time out, he fumbled it, so nice to see him get the ball right back up. And uh, he had 12 carries there in the first half, so uh, real workhorse for Providence, had 20 yards and give him one yard on that play. Yeah, that's a vote of confidence after he just fumbled the ball for them to go back to him so quickly. Two wide receivers to the left. Sims on his left, he goes slightly in motion. Going to be an inside handoff to Mims. A little bit of a hole, but a good push there and give him three yards. Yeah, maybe uh, uh, 
three or four, as you said there, a little like our left side of our line gave him a little bit of an opening, which in the first half on that left side, we did go back there many, many times. But it looks like they have uh, 75 is back on the on the opposite side of the line, it looks like, for New Brockton than when he was playing in the first half on the defensive line, that is, of course. Mims had 11 yards rushing in the first half, so give him three there. He did have the only touchdown for Providence. So it looks like uh, had a tough time uh, getting set up here, so Providence going to call a timeout. Just under nine minutes to go, and uh, Providence driving following an interception will bring you the rest of the action on the Scenic Cable Sports Network. Your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. How does the bank make you feel at home? It's actually looking forward to going inside a bank again, where there's a unique feeling of hospitality that's hard to find today, anywhere. It's where they know my name and they know what I need. It's just different than any other bank. Oh, and they even know my favorite kind of cookie. Yep, that's how. Personal attention and unexpected hospitality from River Bank and Trust. Experience it. Lewis Smith Supply is dedicated to offering a vast collection of fixtures, faucets, and accessories for your kitchen and bath. Make your dreams a reality. Step into the area's only Kohler Premier Showroom or see Delta's Brizo Collection for the latest trends in kitchen and bathroom designs. Lewis Smith Supply offers an extensive line of plumbing supplies for contractors or do-it-yourselfers. For more inspiration, come visit one of our showrooms in Dothan or Enterprise. Your family's health is vitally important to all of us here at Center Drugs in Enterprise in Daleville. We provide personal service and answers to your questions because you're our neighbors. It's so easy to become overwhelmed by what you read, see, or hear. And that's why Center Drugs is here to make things clear for you and to make things as easy as possible. So give us a call or come by and see us at Center Drugs in Enterprise or in Daleville. At Babcock Home Furniture and More, we're working hard this Labor Day to bring you big savings. So this year, everything's on sale. Hurry in for huge deals on in-stock premium reclining sofas and matching recliners. Plus, save up to $1,700 on leather sectionals. And save up to 50% on select Sealy mattress sets. Don't miss Labor Day savings that work for you only at Badcock Home Furniture and More. Just right. At Enterprise Paint and Industrial, we carry a full line of Benjamin Moore paints, along with automotive paints and accessories by Sherwin-Williams and ProSpray. You will find a great selection of power tools by Makita and many name brand air tools, accessories, woodworking equipment, and hardware. We are your factory authorized service center and full line repair shop for your electrical and air tools. Newly remodeled, locally owned and operated, Enterprise Paint and Industrial, more than a paint store. Following the Providence Christian timeout, it is third down and seven. And Pittman's going to go back to pass. He's got a guy open, gets it out to Mims, who turns up field, does a great job of staying on his feet. Looks like it maybe stepped out of bounds right at the yard marker. Nice play there. Nice play. A little play action. Get uh, the defense moving one way. Throw it out into the flat of Harrison Mims, who's a great athlete. You ask him to do something, kid's going to do it. Nice play, not only a nice catch, but then been able to turn it upfield because his momentum was going the opposite way. He was able to turn it upfield though and um, make some very good positive yardage there. Fourth down. Fourth down and one. Play clock, plenty of time, 15 seconds. We've seen this be a little bit of an adventure tonight on fourth down. Providence does look though that they have it really well organized. Wouldn't be surprised if it's inside the Sims here. Sims goes in motion, going to be inside. What do you say? You give the hard yardage to Mims. He does what he's supposed to do. Bowls over a guy, gets the first down down to the 29. No question. Got the play in. And plenty of time for uh, Pittman to get the play call. Time was running down. A little pressure there, but uh, good, good play call, obviously. No question. Fake it to the left side. They've been running that uh, over and over with um, Sims, but uh, then they give it back to Mims coming the other way. 
So get a fresh set of downs at the 29-yard line. Providence moving, leading 7-0. This drive starting after a quick interception. Pittman goes over the middle one more time, just a little out in front of Stickler, and uh, he had a guy in his face, so may not have had an exact time to throw. Yeah, not sure if that's a zone read where he has the option to hand that off or not, but he certainly saw whether he did or didn't. He, uh, he makes the throw over the middle there. Not bad, a little out ahead. Again, that's the throw you don't want to throw behind your guy. If you're going to miss, miss on that side. Stickler was open, take a, a pretty good pass to get it in there. Stickler's been his best uh, target so far this year. Second down and 10. Sims goes in motion, going to be that inside handoff to Mims, and uh, he does a great job. He gets loose and uh, still going, and there was a flag on the play, and he gets knocked down at about the 12. There's another flag probably for a horse collar. I'm guessing you're going to have a hold and a horse collar. Maybe so. There are three flags down. Uh, there was a, whatever those referees saw in the middle there, they both saw the same thing because those flags came flying in. And then, as you said at the end, we saw what happened with Mims. But I don't know if there was a hold or not, but I know this. He broke two tackles on his own. That was an impressive run that may be coming back, but very impressive. I felt like the new Brockton guy may have seen the flag and kind of let up just a little bit, but Mims kept those legs churning. That's the reason that you lift all those weights. That's the reason you do those deadlifts and uh, squats and things like that. So he's not easy to get down, but when you need those tough yards, you're always going to turn to Mims. So what I'm figuring it's going to be a penalty on both sides, and they're going to have to figure out if it's going to be the old 10 yards, go 10 yards back, 15 yards forward. Oh, wow. So a personal foul face mask, the initial call on the Gamecocks. The second call, I believe, was targeting, if I'm not mistaken, on the signal. It is. It's interesting that I wonder if the targeting happened up, up, up where we thought maybe there was holding target again, and that's what got him off, uh, the, the defender. So uh, interesting. We don't have the luxury of replay or anything like that. So the official still talking. If that's a targeting call, will we see an ejection? So it looks like they held up the um, face mask. So not 100% sure, really, to be honest with you, if that was targeting. It seemed like a horse collar to me yeah. more so than targeting. But it was about a 10-yard gain, and then you turn around and give that uh, 15 more yards on the face mask. I, I thought he was going to drop the flag again. No, he's giving like, the yellow hanky like, back, too. Like we've seen. <laughs> so, play clock has not started here. Uh, first down, where are we on? About the six-yard line? Seven About the six-yard line. Third time that Providence has been in the red zone. Turned it over on downs the first time. Second time, Harrison Mims took it in for a touchdown. So, we'll see what Providence does here. Kaiser Sims on Pittman's left. He's going to give it to him behind a host of blockers. A really good tackle there by New Brockton. Gets it at a no gain. Yeah, nice penetration there by the Gamecocks. Again, that's 15. Maybe their best defender, um, Blake Peterson, who ends the junior from that linebacker spot making the play. And Gavin Hughes was in there from the defensive line as well. That defensive line is worn down a little bit from New Brockton, but at times you'll see them flash back up. So Providence is going to have to really bully their way in here. Second down and goal from the five. Sim two scores up now. Yeah, Stickler, he, he's a track star. I mean, he's probably our fastest player, has a tremendous amount of speed, and for him to be able to get the edge, get the corner, he, he cashed in on it there. So nice play call, something we haven't seen, I don't believe, tonight. Um, and a, a good play call, and it certainly paid off for us there with six. Yeah, we have not seen anybody try to get as far to the outside there as they did with Stickler. And uh, he had 11 yards or so in the first half and give him a 12-yard catch in the second half and then that five-yard touchdown. So we'll see here if we can tack on the extra point. 
Leighton Higgler looks like he did a good job there as well, and he uh, had some pressure in his face. He was still able to do it. So Providence puts a second touchdown on the board, seven and a half to go halfway through almost the uh, third quarter. Providence has a stew score lead, and what we've seen when they can get the offense organized and they can get the plays going, they have some success tonight. They've really kind of hurt themselves in the times that they can't do it. Uh, for sure. It looks like the communication, getting the plays in, getting the plays called, and then, of course, the execution is much better in the second half. Speaking with one of the uh, offensive coaches at halftime, he told me they had made some adjustments to their blocking scheme, kind of coached a couple of guys up on how to handle these big guys for New Brockton. And as I was told, it doesn't matter how big you are if you block them the right way. Uh, I don't know about that, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. So he knows a lot more about it than I do. And it certainly it, it seems to be correct. We, we see them uh, executing and playing a little better now. New Brockton has a lot of uh, elements to their team. They've got some good size and things like that, but we've seen them have some real organization problems and trying to get just set in, in the right areas, and Providence able to take advantage of that. So the last couple of times that uh, Hegler has kicked off, he's pooched it, and uh, it's interesting that one of the up men that's done a good job in the first couple of times he's done this is not up this time. So he does the pooch one more time over to the right. Looks like it's going to bounce and go out of bounds. And uh, 13 there for New Brockton did a good job not trying to uh, field it, knew where he was. And so uh, Andrew Peterson, that's Blake Peterson, who's done a good job on defense. Smart player, knew to let that go out of bounds. And so New Brockton going to have good field position. Yeah, that one uh, didn't work out as well as the first two did um, for Hagler. Field, well. What's the call here? It looks like it's... Uh, oh, that's the out-of-bounds call. Mm -hmm. isn't? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I just missed yeah. it. I saw the flag they threw. Well, and New Brockton was going back, which didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So um, not really sure on the rule because it looks like the ball is being placed where it went out of bounds. I, I'm not 100% sure on what the rule is there. So um, I'm hoping they do. Yeah, I think... Well, I don't know either. I thought it would be placed at the 40, uh, 35 or 40, and it's in between... Yeah, we're big proponents of having all rules the same in every level of football. So New Brockton's going to go to the ground and uh, gets a good running play, one of the best running plays of the night, and gives seven yards there. And New, New Brockton starting off this drive pretty well. Yeah, give credit to that offensive line for New Brockton there. Definitely opened up a hole for the running back. I was trying to catch the number. It looks like it's 28. Uh, but I don't have him on the roster for New Brockton. Sorry, kid, I can't give you credit. Maybe it's 26. It's probably is. Karius McNabb, who uh, is a good running back for them. And so uh, give him seven yards. He gets it. And, uh, and uh, usually has been pretty good this year. And uh, Providence has done a good job bottling him up. There's a good example there. He gets uh, really knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And a bunch of the guys rally to take him down. Yeah, they tried to go back to that same uh, – to the same player, same – uh, side there, Lila Banner 23 and Harrison Mims number 10 on the stop for the Eagles. And it looks like they're going to give him one yard. I thought I saw a penalty flag, but uh, also the kids section, uh, students are throwing things up in the air, so maybe I saw that. So it's third down and three. Harrington's going to keep it himself, finds a little bit of daylight, but can't get through. Great tackle for Providence, going to bring up a fourth down and three. Yeah, I hadn't seen many third and shorts tonight, but um, there they do try to get the first down by running it really on the right side. You see Tyson Smith step in with the initial hit from his middle linebacker spot, and then 10 Mims uh, finish him off. And as we talked about before, this is a defense that is uh, friendly to the middle linebacker. They, yeah, absolutely. We want our defensive line to hold those blocks and let those middle linebackers roam and make those plays, and both guys there are doing their job. So the biggest decision of the game for New Brockton comes up right now, uh, trailing 14 nothing. We're at the heat timeout, so we'll take it with the Scenic Cable Sports Network. 5.55 to go in the third quarter. Fourth down and one. Harrington wants to keep it himself. He's bottled up by uh, Providence for a two-yard loss, and Providence going to take over on downs, and New Brockton's offense just cannot get going. Yeah, our, our defensive line, the penetration there, just to blow that play up from the very beginning. Really no secret probably what they're going to do. Try to use their bat athlete, run the ball. Um, Josiah Moncrief with penetration there. I saw Tyson Smith again, I believe, and several other Eagles to stop that. And you can just tell with New Brockton's kind of body language, you can see that they're starting to get just a little bit defeated. So this is a big, big series for Providence can take control of this game. 
Pittman takes the snap. Going to give it inside to uh, Kaiser Sims. You can see there what we've been seeing all night. Takes on the, uh, the potential tackler and takes him for a two-yard ride. So give him seven yards on that play. Yeah, good job of blocking there uh, by the right side. Of, like uh, 51, Charlie McGee, 50, uh, 53, I believe. Tyler Wilkes pulled on that play and good hard running by Sims. So Sims on the right side here. He's going to get it. Well, that's Ryland Banner in. He gets a little move outside, breaks the tackle, breaks another tackle, moves himself forward to the 25-yard uh, line. An excellent run, first run of the night for him, and you give him 13 yards on that carry. Yeah, 23, Banner looks slippery on, on that one. Uh, they grabbed and grabbed and just couldn't hold on to him. And as you mentioned, the body language of the Gamecocks look a little defeated. They look a little tired now. Arm tackles happening. And this is where a game can get out of hand, where you really need to do a gut check here and just play for pride. Do, do the best you can, but they're getting tired, and we're going to see how they finish this game. So Banner really played a lot in the first two games. This game, Kaiser Sims has been more of the workhorse, and uh, he's getting his opportunity here in the uh, latter half of the third quarter. He's got the ball once again, goes inside and give him just one yard. But to be honest with you, the clock's running under five minutes to go, up two scores. There's no hurry to score here. No, none whatsoever. I agree. A little delay on that handoff. Not sure exactly what that was, if that was by design or, or, or if that was an exchange issue or whatever. But by the time he did get the ball and take off with it, there was good penetration by the Gamecocks. It's interesting, we saw Sims lining up more on the left side and uh, Banner here on the right side. And uh, Pittman gonna go just right back over the middle. Got a guy wide open and we'll see if he can make a move. He does, breaks the tackle at the five, goes in for the touchdown. And it's the first time that we've called Gabe Pemberton's name. Nice job there, nice play fake, first of all. I thought the ball had been handed off too. And I think the whole game got defense did as well. Uh, uh, Pittman pulls it after the fake and then finds Pemberton wide open over the middle. Really, really well uh, executed play. Again, I don't know if that's a zone read, if he's got the option there to hand that ball off or, in a, or if he's reading that and pulling it and making that throw. Whatever the case, it worked out. It was an excellent decision and Pemberton was wide open and uh, did break a tackle there at about the five yard line to get in. This snap uh, not going well and so just running for his life is Pittman. He takes a little hit there at the end, throws it away and uh, that point after didn't work but uh, Providence still up three scores, 20 to nothing. Definitely uh, got the momentum. Definitely take advantage of, of a defense that looks pretty tired for the Gamecocks. They've got a lot of guys just like we do that play both ways. And, um, you know, that wears you down. I know it's a little cooler tonight than we're used to. Uh, still not cool, but cooler than we're used to. But these guys are getting worn out playing both ways, no doubt about it. And you look over on New Brockton's sideline, they only have about 15 guys or so that are not out on the field. And some of them look like they could be uh, really, really uh, smaller underclassmen as well. So they're doing the best that they can. But Providence has really seemed to take a hold here of the game in the uh, third quarter. I would venture to say that's Gabe Pemberton's first career touchdown. We've called a number of games that we haven't seen every game, but uh, don't remember him scoring a touchdown. So it's a big night for him and his family. Yeah, good job there by Gabe. And those, you know, tight ends a lot of time don't get a lot of glory, uh, but they are a hey, really nice route and a good run after the catch. I mean, he, a guy had a chance to tackle and bring him down, but Gabe ran through it uh, and uh, was able to get the six for us. And you always like to see a senior get a chance uh, to get a score, so a career highlight there as well, 25 yards. So Hegler on, and uh, we'll see if he does the pooch kick once again. Last time he did that, it went out of bounds, and uh, Corey and I were baffled at why the ball was placed where it was. So we'll see if he can just kick it deep and make it easy on us. Kind of a squib kick, and uh, that's a perfect example. Picking it up at the 25, looked like the knee was down there, and uh, that was um, Carius McNabb picking it up and uh, had a little bit of daylight there, but unfortunately his knee was down. And in college and high school, when your knee is down, when you pick it up, you're down at the spot. Yeah, he took off running. He tried. I give him credit for that. Uh, he did take off with it, but the, the ref came in there after a two or three second delay and made it uh, uh, made the call, got him stopped, and they're bringing it back and to start out at the 26 yard line. So four minutes to go in the third quarter and uh, a lot of difference, just the feel of the game here in the third quarter than what we felt like in the uh, first half. And uh, Providence really feels like they took control of it here. If the defense can do a three and out or get a turnover, you really feel good about this game. So the ball goes all the way over, and uh, an unbelievable miracle catch. It went from a catch to an interception, back to a catch, and 
most of the yardage tonight for New Brockton will be in the miracle category. Yeah, that's uh, uh, number six, I believe it is. Uh, eight again. I've been uh, struggling with that all night. Just I Sian believe Rosso, it was Baylor Foster. Foster, who uh, balls in his hands goes to um, uh, that was uh, I believe. Stickler, yeah, Chapel on the coverage for us goes through Chapel's hands and then comes back to Foster again. So now it's an inside handoff and uh, not getting much running room there is uh, Carius McNabb and going to be right about the uh, line of scrimmage and then what looks like a flag coming in late here. Not sure if that's a holding or something else. But go back to the catch for a second. I think Chapel Stickler saw it and thought about pick six just for a second, and it it went through Foster's hands into his hand, and he just yeah. didn't secure it. Didn't secure it, yeah. Give Foster credit for staying with it, and so he's got 39 or 29 yards receiving tonight, and two of the biggest plays that New Brockton has had have really been miracles. Yeah, that's a personal foul on the Eagles. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Uh, to draw that call, I must have missed it. Uh, the receipt uh, we had a the quarterback held up by one leg, it looked like uh, Harrison Mims, um, and then we had two or three guys come in really hard. I don't know if there was a helmet to helmet. I think that would be targeted. But it looks so, like it's against New Brockton, so not. Oh, it is backing. Okay, okay. So okay. not 100 percent sure what he saw there. We couldn't see it. It was in, whatever was in the mix of players is what happened. So, but he could see it. Uh, it's going to be a personal foul. So something that happened, so uh, all kinds of weird things can happen sometimes in a scrub. So uh, works out to Providence's favor. It's second down and 25. Just going to be a handoff here to um, Josiah Russo, and uh, he just gets nominal yards here, but it uh, puts it into a category of third down and 23, and not sure New Brockton uh, came with their third and 23 play tonight. No, that's uh, asking a lot of an offense that's really struggled all night. Number 30, Trey Douglas uh, on the stop there, along with Harrison Mims and Tyson Smith. Trey not just uh, holding that block that time and letting those linebackers make the play. He wanted to get in a piece of the action, too. Can't blame him. So he did a good job. And uh, Rousseau, who ran that last one, is averaging 71 yards a game tonight, only seven yards. So Harrington's going to go back, looked for the pass, didn't see it. It's kind of scrambling around now. He's really in trouble and just throws it out. Actually didn't go past the line of scrimmage, but he's outside the tackle box. We have no idea if those rules apply here. They apply to some level of football somewhere. And uh, it looks like it's going to be a fourth and forever, and uh, New Brockton obviously going to punt. Yeah, he uh, did buy a little, had a little time initially, actually. He gives offensive line credit, and then as uh, the, uh, the pocket collapsed, he scrambled, was able to buy a little more time, and um, just put nothing, nothing open, had no one open. Nobody came back to help him out, it looked like, so just and, threw it away. And that's a good example of he wanted to go to Balin Foster, and Foster kind of ran a route, but didn't really run a route, didn't have his head around, and didn't think that he could throw it to him and that he would be ready for it. And at that point, it was just scramble and try to find something. So New Brockton's going to call a timeout here. They've had trouble with the kicking game and getting set, and they want to run motion, I think, maybe to see if it's going to draw them off sides. But it's really kind of got them just a little out of sorts. They're going to take a timeout. 2.50 to go. It is fourth down and 25. New Brockton's going to punt again. And another good punt by Foster. He gets it down and it really takes a good bounce. There was no Providence return man back there. Uh, and the ball's going to stop at about the 29-yard line. And Providence really feels like they're in control of the game right now. Very important for them to hang on to the ball, put a drive together, get this drive to the fourth quarter, and really just start that clock running. Yeah, let's see how they do with it. You know, we've um, had, had some success. Can we keep that success going? Can we execute when we have the lead? You know, you know because you want to you want to execute obviously when you're behind. You want to execute when you're close, and you, it, it's harder sometimes to focus when you're ahead to really do things the right way. So Keith is Coach Keith is going to want to do that here. Let's see if they can do that. And what we talked about to start the game, this is a great part of the schedule. You had Ashford and New Brockton, two very winnable games. Providence really needed to show that they could win this game. So the old double move there goes to Calvin McClintock, and I was going to bring up the fact that we have not heard from him. He made an impact on the game the first couple of carries that he had there. Once again, give him five yards. Yeah, good running there by Calvin. Hit the hole quickly and was able to make a positive play, and it brings it up second and four and a half for five. 
He had 20 yards rushing in the first half. Give him five there. Going to go right back once again. He picks his way through. Give him one yard. It was just a big scrum of guys right there. That might have been a situation. I'm not sure if Banner can hold on to the ball, but that might have been a situation where if he held on, he might have mm -hmm. had a big game. As if like a zone read type thing from the... Yeah, uh, for on the on the first after right. the first handoff, yeah, uh, get a little confusing there. But, uh, well, fans, maybe that works. fans all are 100 percent correct on any of their analysis of this. So, as we know, the play probably had no chance to do that. But uh, that was a play that didn't really uh, gain much. So, again, one yard. So, it brings up a third down and four. Clock running, minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Providence leading 20 to nothing. And it looks like Providence going to take another timeout here, their second of the half, third and six. Pittman's going to run. It looks like he's going to try to throw it. There's nobody out there. I'm not sure really what that play was supposed to be. Not 100% sure. That kind of looks similar to what we saw earlier where he rolled that way. Nobody's home. That brings up a fourth down. Going to have to punt. Yeah, not really sure. Uh what happened on that? I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. That Sims that was rolling out with him, um, you know, he was trying to block someone. That play was blown up quickly, and there's just obviously no no um, option to throw the ball to when no receivers on this side of the field. So The only way when you look at that play is maybe Sims is supposed to go off the block and go out in coverage. Mm -hmm. Looks like Pittman's going to quick kick this one. That's the smart move. Nobody back for New Brockton, so the ball is going to bounce all the way down. Going to go inside the 20. Excellent punt with uh, just about a minute 14 to go uh, to the fourth quarter. New Brockton's going to get the ball back, and the Providence defense, which has played excellent, holding New Brockton to about uh, less than 80 yards in the first half, and outside of that 19-yard uh, pass that went through three guys' hands, New Brockton's really hadn't had much of an answer on offense in the second half either. Yeah, looking like the, the kind of the, the Eagle defense defensive all the way they've been playing um, so far tonight and obviously that's, that's they've gotten some help from an offense who has not executed very well but our linebackers are looking better and better when the linebackers are looking good on this defense that's when the, it, it's running like it's supposed to and that's without Ford Register not even here yet he's going to be back when we come back after the bye week and he's going to be a difference maker on defense from what I understand. And Providence has seven guys that are not dressed and haven't dressed much of the year. So Harrington's going to go up top. Got a guy, got a good catch, and uh, looked like for a second that it was not going to be open, but it turned out to be open, and that's a 31-yard gain up to the 50. Yeah, that was a beautiful play. I mean, I mean, set up very nicely, had plenty of time, had a nice pocket, and threw it to number five, Matthew Smith, who's a 6'3", 170-pound senior at wide receiver. And, Hey, why not throw to that kid a little more? That was a very well executed play. And just after we got through talking about the Providence defense and uh, how much better they've done, um, they give up the big play there. Well, this game would certainly change if New Brockton were to score to make it 20 to 7 or 20 to 6. Harrington going to roll out. This looks like it's a run all the way. Really has no chance. He's going to go out of bounds. There's a tackle out of bounds. And uh, that's really, really a tough call. It's the correct call. Wasn't vicious, wasn't malicious, but he was tackled out of bounds. He was. Uh, 23, Rylan Banner with nice pursuit there uh, for the defense. Uh, comes up hobbling a little bit. I hope Rylan's going to be okay. But, yeah, just a little bit too aggressive, uh, getting a little bit excited and, and uh, should have pulled up there. But going to cost us. So it's not going to be a first down. Uh, Harrington really wanted no part of any kind of contact and just was going to go out of bounds on his own anyway. And that just kind of was a little bit of uh, Banner not knowing exactly where he was on the field. So that takes the ball all the way down to the Providence 42-yard line. It's going to be second down and two. The clock's going to start. Uh, with 41 seconds left in the third quarter, and New Brockton has just a little bit of life here. And so now we have Providence taking their third and final timeout. Looked like they didn't have the right personnel on defense. And so uh, the game, which we said 15 minutes ago, seemed like it was really much in uh, Providence's favor. is starting to teeter just a little bit. Yeah, it is. Um, obviously, the Gamecocks have an opportunity here. Um, thankful for a big play for them. And then, of course, this the uh, penalty there which is going to be a major negative play, turns into a positive play for him. So we've helped him out um, with a bust on defense and then the uh, penalty. But we've seen the New Brockton offense all night. Um, can they string together two or three or four positive plays? They haven't done it so far. 
they have about 110 yards total tonight, and you can really look at three plays that are almost miracle plays where they got big chunks. So the threat is there, but we just haven't seen it executed outside of something that was almost miraculous. Yeah, that's what's got to be so frustrating as a Gamecock fan is to know that the potential. I mean, they can do this. They've got a guy who can throw the ball. They've got several guys who can and are good receivers, and they've got size on the line. So what's what's the issue? Why are they not as a, a cohesive, cohesive unit that's um, – successful right and it could be a situation where three games from now they're very good it's just going to take them a while so harrington's going to roll out that ball was easily intercepted by chapel stickler makes a couple of moves going to go down the sideline he's going to take it all the way back for a pick six for providence and make that about a 64 yard pick six he thought he could get one earlier got one there and the uh, team's feeling much better now no question just as we talked about that not able to string together too many positive plays and here they throw a pick six you talk about a momentum swing. Chip Stickler, again, as we talked about earlier, is fast. He is a track star. He can really fly. He catches that and gets that momentum going the other way, and nobody's going to catch him. So that's his fourth touchdown of the year. Last week he had a couple of touchdown catches, had one in the first game against Highland Home. This is his first defensive touchdown, and again, possibly the first defensive touchdown of his career. And uh, Providence was able last week to generate some turnovers, does it again tonight. So we'll see if it's a little better chance on the kick here. Uh, snap not that much better, but uh, Pittman does a good job getting it down. Hegler gets it through, and uh, Providence now leading 27 nothing with 28 seconds to go in the third quarter. Yeah, this is a, a nice feeling. Uh, we hadn't had this feeling on a home game in a while going into the fourth quarter. I know they had it last week, but being able to have such a lead, uh, going to get some other guys some playing time here, I'm sure, in just a few minutes. Uh, definitely a change from what we've had some of the most recent home games, not only this year, of course, but last year as well. We talked about how well Harrington can throw the ball. That was a situation where he just rolled out to his right, and uh, the play just was not there. And when he threw it, Stickler was just looking at him the whole time, and he basically threw it right to him, and Stickler did the rest. As you said, he was a very good track star, uh, running indoor track, outdoor track, and you could see his speed there. So that's also a situation to where it would be nice if Providence could get him a little bit on the outside sometimes with some of those throws and utilize that speed better no question yeah that's good to see him on the offensive side of the ball making the catches he's making and then there defensively too but yeah he can be a threat on offense if we can start to try to throw the ball deep uh he, he can certainly run up under it with the speed he has so Providence with a, just a little bit of trouble getting lined up here. The uh, play clock running down to 10. They have no timeout, so they're going to have to kick it. And it's just another squib kick, and it's going to bounce a couple of times. And uh, New Brockton lets it bounce around and picking up at the 20 and uh, bouncing back outside. I believe that's Josiah uh, Rousseau does his best to uh, get two yards there, a hard-fought two yards. And with 19 seconds to go, New Brockton in a world of hurt down 27 nothing. Yeah, no question. That a nice, again, squib kick by executed by Hagler. Got a couple of good bounces. And, uh, you know, if we can get him to continue to do that with some of his directional kicking and what looks like a good job of being able to squib kick it, that can make a big difference. Because here they're starting on the 20, what, 22-yard line as opposed to we've been giving the ball at many times to the other team on the 40 and even the 50-yard line at times. And especially on some of the teams that uh, are a little bit better than New Brockton, that can really play into your favor. So Harrington back out there, fresh off of his pick six, going to go inside to Rousseau. An excellent tackle, and uh, that most likely going to end the third quarter. And uh, Providence defense once again playing very well. Yeah, that was a 24 Reed Ferris getting some playing time in there. Fall off a block really well. He saw the runner coming but was able to fight off that block and make a really nice tackle. So he's 5'10", 160-pound junior, and as we've said before, 13 seniors, 16 juniors. It's a little bit more experienced Providence team than they had last year and showing it so far this year. Heading to the fourth quarter, Providence leading 27-0. You're watching the Scenic Cable Sports Network. Your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. At Babcock Home Furniture and More, we're working hard this Labor Day to bring you big savings. So this year, everything's on sale. Hurry in for huge deals on in-stock premium reclining sofas and matching recliners. 
Plus, save up to $1,700 on leather sectionals. And save up to 50% on select Sealy mattress sets. Don't miss Labor Day savings that work for you. Only at Badcock Home Furniture and More. Just right. Welcome to Briars Warren Drug Company, your hometown pharmacy in downtown Enterprise. If you haven't visited lately, please do. You'll see some old friends and meet some new friends too. We know you're busy and we can help by getting you in and out in no time at all. If you need a vaccination, you can get it done right here in the pharmacy. We're here to help you in any way we can because that's what good neighbors do. Briars Warren Drug Company in downtown Enterprise. You can count on us. How does the bank make you feel at home? It's actually looking forward to going inside a bank again, where there's a unique feeling of hospitality that's hard to find today, anywhere. It's where they know my name and they know what I need. It's just different than any other bank. Oh, and they even know my favorite kind of cookie. Yep, that's how. Personal attention and unexpected hospitality from River Bank and Trust. Experience it. Lewis Smith Supply is dedicated to offering a vast collection of fixtures, faucets, and accessories for your kitchen and bath. Make your dreams a reality. Step into the area's only Kohler Premier Showroom or see Delta's Brizo Collection for the latest trends in kitchen and bathroom designs. Lewis Smith Supply offers an extensive line of plumbing supplies for contractors or do-it-yourselfers. For more inspiration, come visit one of our showrooms in Dothan or Enterprise. Welcome back to Providence Christian High School. Mike Bridges alongside Corey Driggers in the fourth quarter here. Providence leading 27 nothing and uh, trying a reverse here uh, on second down and 10 goes nowhere. It looks like uh, that was Balin Foster trying to come around. He's a good athlete, uh, has a uh, pass on a on a um, faked punt earlier. He's got a catch and uh, tried to run it there. Didn't really get much and it looks like we had some extracurricular afterward. Yeah, that was a really good defensive play. We strung out the play, stayed at home, or disciplined, and uh, we've got a hold called on Providence. I thought it was going to be a personal foul for taunting or unsportsmanlike conduct, uh, but but uh, I'm not sure uh, the holding on defense because it wasn't a pass. I mean, they, it was a pop pass. Right, right. Uh, uh, unless they then unless they called it holding because he drug him down. But typically, that's a defensive lineman holding somebody so they can't get the screen pass or whatever. So Harrington's going to go up top, going to try to go to Foster again, and uh, just can't connect. And uh, Foster is a great athlete, and you want to get him out there in space. He just does not look comfortable as a wide receiver, though. Yeah, there's our defensive star of the night so far, Chapel Sickle, with really, really good coverage on Foster who's a good athlete. Again, a good throw there by Harrington, number one, um, catchable ball. Uh, but good defense. Uh, there was a little contact, and I thought the referee did a good job of holding the flag there. He thought about it, he thought about it, but both of them were running straight through, had a little contact going for the ball, but, but no interference there. 100% agree. When the ball hit the ground, I look right to the official because we're so kind of figured that's what's going to happen. So Harrington gets the ball out, and a good tackle there by uh, Mims was not going to be a completion anyway, but you like to see the effort. Yeah, good job. If that ball would have been caught, that would have been a two- or three-yard loss thanks to the coverage of Mims. So a really good job of covering him out of the backfield. That was 15, the intended receiver, who's a really good linebacker, Blake Peterson. Yeah, we've seen him a couple times on offense. Uh, has not been able to uh, haul in the pass plays here. And uh, Harrington's a good athlete, got uh, good range and a really good arm. And uh, tonight, just not able to connect. It is third down and ten. Harrington's going to go back and pass one more time. It goes up over the middle, and he has a guy open, and the ball just goes right through his hands and uh, not going to be able to uh, connect. So it's a fourth down and 10, down 27 nothing, 11-20 to go here, and it uh, looks like they're going to punt. Yeah, good coverage there. Even if he makes that catch, we make the tackle short of the first down. We did a good job there of not trying to jump that or get, get beat on a, on a deeper route. 
um, our, our uh, DB was staying home and had the receiver in front of him ready to make a play if he did catch it. And it's more frustrating for New Brockton for the opportunity to really get some rhythm and get some of these plays that'll work. I did not notice this until tonight. This is about the sixth punt that Gabe Harrington is the long snapper for New Brockton. Not often do you see a quarterback as a long snapper. That was kind of interesting right there. We'll talk about that in a second. So a pretty good kick, and it takes a really good New Brockton bounce and uh, going to go down at the 27-yard line. And a really interesting play there that um, Reed Ferris just kind of put his hands up. You feel like if he tried a little bit harder and laid out, he would have been able to block that. Yeah, I wonder if – because he looked like he did. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I just wonder if he was told, do not commit a penalty here because obviously you rough the punter there it's an automatic first down and we can't run the clock so i don't know if that's what it was uh or he was just playing it safe on his own or if he was told it's a smart play to not run into the kicker and make a play right now when it's 27 yeah. nothing you're in control of the game when it came to the sidelines christian durden did show him about <laughs> how to kind of lay out for it and he could have easily laid out for it without hitting the punter Either way, Providence has the ball at the 26-yard line in control of the game, and uh, Pittman's going to keep it himself, go straight up the middle, something we didn't see in week one, but we've seen a little bit tonight, and give him uh, just about five yards on that play. Yeah, showed some quickness there after he pulled the fake handoff and uh, really bur hit a, had a little burst there uh, as he hit the hole for a really positive play. So he ran the ball three times in the first half. He had negative 12 yards to start with, but uh, last two plays he's had uh, seven yards and five yards there. So a little bit uh, of an aspect that we haven't seen as much from him this year, but what we've seen from Providence in previous years is they have a lot of running plays for the quarterback. Mm -hmm. Second down and four. Pittman's going to hand it off with a little bit of running room there. Sims is back in there and give him just about three yards, setting down a third and three. Yeah, just short of the first down. Good running there by um, Sims. So, you know, and what you mentioned about our running quarterbacks in the past, in order for this running game to be as effective as you want it to be with the misdirection, the different plays that we run, you have to have a running back, uh, a quarterback that runs the ball often that gives that threat. Um, so we're going to have to work Pittman in. He's not a very big kid, although he has put on some weight. He's just a freshman, as we talked about. We've got to get him more involved in the running game if we're going to be able to move the ball effectively all year. And it helps to get more comfortable in the offense and uh, not take a lot of hits and things like that and showing that he uh, most likely can do that. So Sims right up the middle. Looks like he's knocked down right about uh, at the marker. So we'll see uh, what they end up doing. They've done a good job of just eyeing it and either giving it to him or not giving it to him. And it uh, looks like it's going to be a fourth down in inches. Oh, I thought he had it. That was a little, little surprised with the spot there. I thought he'd made it for sure. Uh, Good hard running, good deep, uh, good blocking, I thought, and I thought we had the first down, but uh, the Gamecock showing a little bit of fight left in them. So a Gamecock is running off the field uh, 10 seconds to go. It looks like they're resetting the play clock, so that uh, helps Providence here because Providence has no timeouts, and it is fourth down in inches. It's going to be a handoff. They're going to go for it and get the first down, kind of slithering through there and getting that first down and keeping the chains moving, keeping the clock rolling. Yeah, Kaiser Sims again on the carry. Uh, kid getting a lot of work tonight. From, from going from game, game week one, just two weeks ago, when he had no carries, to what are we seeing him? Where is he at tonight on his He's carry? He's about 18 carries or so. These stats are unofficial, but uh, it's been a while since Providence has had a uh, player carry the ball this many times because usually it's a number of guys getting an opportunity. Probably have to go back to Christian Durden before he hurt his knee. He was probably yeah. the last player to carry it this many times. So an inside handoff to Calvin McClintock. And uh, as we've said before, he's been pretty effective when he's gone in there. Give him five yards on that play and uh, given really a break. Seeing Sims there, Sims looks like he's starting to really tire. Yeah, good job there by Calvin. Again, good running. And what you really want to see there, obviously, when you're up 27 nothing, or really any time, but especially when you want to be protecting the ball and running the clock, Calvin had two hands around that ball, wrapping it up as he was taking the contact to make sure he didn't fumble. He's got about 31 yards rushing in really limited opportunity. So we've got Trey Douglas in there. The first time we've seen him kind of as an up back and give once again to Sims and a really good tackle there by New Brockton, setting up a third down. 
Yeah, they uh, were able to close the gap there again. The big number 75, who's just a huge uh, difference maker on the defensive line for the Gamecocks. And I believe he is a senior this year, Bradley Atkinson. So there's a few uh, different players that are kind of cycling in here with seven minutes to go and Providence up 27 to nothing. Play clock coming up on 15. As we've said, Providence does not have any timeouts, so uh, they're going to have to get organized here and get the ball snapped or take a penalty. So it's just going to be a handoff, just keep the ball moving, and uh, once again uh, does get the first down there, falls forward, and that's exactly what Providence needs, just keep the chains moving. Good hard running there by uh, Sims, um, and a little late substitution there. We had uh, Tyson Smith go in for Douglas at the H-back spot, and in spite of that late substitution, we got the penalty off in plenty of time, and it was clean, executed well, so maybe making some improvement there with the, with the communications and the changes that we're making. And getting a lot of guys playing time. A lot of guys got to play last week. A lot of guys get to play this week. As you know, it's a long season, and you really just need to play here or there sometimes from different guys. So it's nice to see them getting an opportunity. First down and 10, just inside New Brockton territory. Almost a tough snap, and it's a uh, pass. And uh, had Smith open, but uh, from the snap to everything, that one just was not smooth. It did. A little high snap that threw off uh, the play from the beginning. Um, Pittman was able to recover that snap, of course, but uh, he was uh, feeling some pressure and uh, threw it a little bit too high. So the heat timeout for the fourth quarter really can't come at a better time for Providence. Gives them an opportunity to kind of get reorganized here as they have a lot of guys coming in and out. Going to take a break. We'll take it with them here on the Scenic Cable Sports Network. We're back for the final six minutes and 10 seconds at Providence Christian High School. It is second down and 10. Providence leading 27 nothing, coming out of the heat timeout that the officials do uh, each quarter uh, right now with the heat and humidity. Providence with an inside handoff and Sims once again, that's his 22nd carry. Give him four yards on that. And Corey, we're seeing a few more uh, guys on the line getting a chance to play. Yeah, it is nice. These guys work hard every week, obviously in practice, just like the starters. So it's good to see some of these clean jerseys get out there and get a little bit dirty. Some of these younger guys get some opportunities because you never know, you know, if somebody goes down on the starting line, you may need one of these guys to step up. So it's good to see them get some game action. Providence took over with 11 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. We're now down to five and a half minutes. Uh, Sims getting 17 yards on this drive so far. And Providence just uh, wants to just keep the ball moving, keep the chains moving. It's just going to be a, a straight handoff to Sims and uh, give him, uh, looks like he's going to get right back to the line of scrimmage. The uh, snap the last couple times has been just a little off, and that's kind of thrown off the play. Yeah, I've got a new center in. I can't too, tell who that is just yet. I uh, haven't been able to see that number. But, um, yeah, but getting warmed up, getting some snaps, getting those reps, and uh, just keep getting better. That's the key. Going to bring up a fourth down. Of course, we're going to go for it here on our side of the field fourth and six to try to, as you said, keep the chains moving and most of all, keep the clock moving. So it's fourth and five and uh, the clock continues to run now under five minutes to go and the Providence uh, securely in control of this game, 27 nothing. So a little bit of movement and uh, that's gonna be a penalty and this play is not gonna work at all and uh, it's really a huge loss, probably about an eight yard loss and that was a situation where you had a lot of guys in there at the same time and uh, it looked like Stickler wasn't quite sure what to do. Yeah, I think uh, that, uh, that was an illegal shift, I believe is the call. Mm -hmm. I had a couple of guys going um, in, in motion at the same time in different directions. Um, yeah, again, some new guys in there that haven't been in on offense. Learning opportunity. They're going to um, decline the penalty. Well, it's interesting because it seems, the like they, the play. They, it seems like they must have taken the penalty. Well, I'm not sure. I don't know why the yeah. ball is spotted at the 49-yard line yeah. when he was tackled a good seven yards up. But many things happen on a football Friday night that uh, are unexplained. 
So New Brockton takes over, uh, starting offense still out there. Gabe Harrington still slinging it down the field and uh, throws it down and uh, no real opportunity there. And uh, the passing game has just not been there tonight for New Brockton. Yeah, just uh, not a receiver really. I mean, 10 yards maybe away. Uh, I don't know if there's a miscommunication on the particular route, but Harrington got it and let it go as quick as he could. And Matthew Smith uh, had a touchdown last week. Harrington was able to hit him when he came in the game, and uh, he's very, very slow tonight and uh, not a lot of energy here as we're winding down with four and a half to go. Harrington just a straight drop and uh, going to go. Got a guy open oh, wow. and a good catch there and a broken tackle and still breaking tackles, getting down to uh, just about the 20. Uh, it's hard to see where he's at, about the 27-yard line. So one of the better pass plays tonight. No question. I mean, I'm, he goes all the way, but that was impressive. That was fun to watch. Uh, number 20, Anthony Siler, 6'1", 165-pound freshman. Um, I thought that ball was overthrown. He goes and snatches it out of the air and just makes an outstanding catch. And really, when you're going to look at Harrington's numbers tonight, he's going to have close to 100 yards passing, and uh, they're down 27 nothing. And it's not really much of uh, telling what the game was like tonight. Again, two or three of those were really miracle catches, and you could say that one right there was a one-handed yeah. catch. And a fake punt, of course. Right. But a great, great effort by New Brockton to be down 27 nothing. They could easily pack it in. So Harrington's just going to throw that ball out of bounds, and uh, any time he's gone to his right, it's been very, very difficult for him to try to get anybody open. He had a guy open in the end zone that he overthrew, but most of the time when he rolls out there, nobody's open. Yeah, 51 and 56 for the Eagles. That's Ethan Holland and Charlie McGee with the pressure on Harrington there to um, really not give him a chance to look downfield and get the ball uh, delivered to one of his receivers. And Ethan Holland was the one that came in to play center. And uh, he's got good size, and uh, all he needs is just a little bit of game experience. So it's second down and 10. Harrington is going to sling it again. And uh, probably the fourth drop tonight right in his hands and uh, just not able to take that. That looks like it was Braylon Foster once again. Yeah, Foster's a little upset, and I don't blame him. He, he, it's one of those deals where the ball's right on the money. You think it's an easy catch, but he tried to turn and run before he got the ball in his hands. And when you watch tonight, that's the kind of play that you need to get to Foster. If he can get that play and turn up field, he's got a real opportunity. Running those longer routes has not been a strong suit. You can see what a good athlete he is. If you can get him out in space, you have some opportunities. That makes it third down and 10. And uh, we have a stoppage in play. Looks like New Brockton's going to talk it over. And uh, we'll take the timeout with them. 3.32 to go in a fourth quarter that uh, may last longer than the entire game. You're watching the Scenic Cable Sports Network. Back here for the final 3.32. Providence leading 27-0, third down and 10. And uh, Harrington's going to throw it up. There's a little bit of contact. We'll see if there's any kind of flag. Shouldn't be. The ball was not even catchable. And uh, that's kind of what... Uh, We've seen from New Brockton tonight kind of throwing it up, hoping his guys can run underneath it, and that was a situation where just not close. Yeah, not really, and I thought that we might see a flag there because there definitely was contact. I believe our guy grabbed his arm at the end. It was definitely not a catchable ball, but from what I understand, that's not a rule in high school. It doesn't have to be catchable. So I thought that we may see a flag, but he held on to it, and I can understand why. 27 up and three minutes left. Well, let's not say too loud that uh, that's not a rule. So, all right, Harrington back, fourth and ten, going to go over the middle. Has a guy open, an excellent play there, and uh, trying to go to Foster, but an excellent play there by C.J. Sullivan. Yeah, that was a really nice defensive play by 14 Sullivan across the middle, and a uh, good sportsmanship by the Eagles to help up the uh, Gamecock um, player after he went down pretty hard. In the first week, Sullivan made a couple of good plays, and uh, so a very good player that has a big future, and uh, his brother was an excellent player, and he's picking up right where he left off as a junior. So uh, Providence taking over now, 319. What they'd like to do is uh, put four or five good plays together, get this clock running, and uh, go ahead and seal up this victory. And you have most of your starting offensive backfield out there. Pittman is still out there. Sims is still out there. Uh, 
Sims going to get the carry, got a little bit of a hole, and give him just about four yards, but most importantly, just keep that clock running. Yeah, and about three of that four was yards after contact because he ran really hard. Good effort there. We're seeing um, Sims continuing to get the ball fed to him here. It's good that he's getting these carries. We know Durden's going to be back at some point. But it's good to see Sims getting the carries, running the ball so far, getting this game time experience. Because down the road, we're going to need Durden, we're going to need um, Sims, we're going to need several guys to be able to carry the ball effectively. Yeah, and you're going to need Ryland Banner. He's got some experience now. So if you need uh, four or five carries from him and a certain opportunity, you're going to get those as well. So you're going to see everything much more deliberate here. Clock winding down to about two minutes, expecting Sims to get it. Uh, once again, that's his 23rd carry and uh, really took it right there in the legs for no gain. And you got to hand it to New Brockton. They could easily just, you know, have lackadaisical effort, but they're continuing to play hard. Down 27 nothing. clock under two minutes, and it is a uh, third down and seven. Corey and I would prefer New Brockton not get the ball back because they would throw it again. We need a first down here for sure. We're definitely going to run uh, two plays, I'm sure, anyway, so be nice to go ahead and get the first down and make it easy. So Providence got a lead blocker in on this play and of course going to let the clock run down before they snap it. Now it's under five. Sims goes in motion. Now we have an inside handoff in uh, first time tonight, second time tonight maybe running the ball. Really no opportunity there as well. That uh, I think that was Cade Sanders getting that run and it looks like Providence is going to punt the ball but by the time they kick it it will be under a minute to go. Yeah that was a uh well, actually, 28, David McClurkin on the carry. David getting his first carry, I know, of the night and probably of the year. Uh, unless he got a little work last week when we weren't able to see him. But good job there by David. The kid works hard. Uh, got a lot of heart. Going to play a lot of football for Providence uh, over the next couple of years. He is a 10th grader, and uh, that might even have been his first career uh, rush. So hopefully, good for him. And Mims punts it, just gets it out of there and uh, rolls out of bounds at about the 40 and a half yard line. And uh, the clock ran an extra four seconds. We appreciate that from the uh, timekeeper. So 33 seconds to go. I would be surprised if New Brockton passed it, but we've seen odder things before. So at the top of the broadcast, we talked about that you look at the schedule. Had a tough opening game. We knew that was going to be a tough one. One of the better teams in 2A came in here and uh, handled Providence fairly well. But then the schedule opens up for them. Ashford, New Brockton, two games that were very winnable. Providence did what they had to do. Yeah, no question. And uh, you want to start, obviously, 2-0 in the region is, is great. Um, we've got a man wide open. In New Brockton, you got to give it to them. We thought they would run it. They're finally able to get it to Foster. It took a long time to do it, but uh, put a 60-yard touchdown on them, and so the shutout goes away for Providence with 23 seconds to go. And honestly, you got to hand it to New Brockton. They could have just need it. They didn't. They got a positive play, something to build on. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what happened there. Busted coverage. I, you know, we got some new guys in and out. I'm not sure what happened on the defense there, but. Uh, you know, what I was going to say as we were leading into that play is you, you want to be 2-0, obviously, in the region. we got some things we, we do need to work on, and we're going to have an opportunity to do that. With a bye week being 2-0 in the region, we're going to get some, some guys healthy. We're going to have some guys coming back after the um, bye week that haven't played this year. Um, so I think there's some really – we're heading in the right direction. This is right where you want to be. Obviously, the first week, sure, it would have been great to get a win, but that was a good team, as you mentioned. But good things are happening. We're on the, on the right track right now this time of the year. So New Brockton going to go for two. Harrington running around. There's a million guys going, and uh, the offensive lineman caught it. I suppose he's eligible now. Uh, there's the flag right there. So you got to give it to 75. If he's not eligible, he sold it going in. But at that point, I believe the official has to let everybody know that he is tackle eligible. So um, maybe so. And at six four three thirty, it's kind of hard to hide once you catch the ball that maybe you're not an eligible yeah. guy. I, uh, pretty easy one to see, um, and I think that uh, they've been caught. So. Yeah, it's illegal touching, but a wonderful opportunity for 75. And it shows New Brockton, you do the tackle eligible, he can catch it, and he can take it in. You so know, there's just some things you're still talking about 50 years later, and that guy's going to be telling his grandkids that story as, a, as, a, as an offensive lineman. 
I had a chance. It was a two-point conversion tonight. Ten years from now, it would be a 35-yard catch <laughs> that he could have taken in to win the game. Yeah, one-handed with one foot touching inside in the bounds. That's right. Unfortunately, we have seen that play tonight a couple of times from New Brockton. So a fun moment for New Brockton in a game that uh, very forgettable for them and uh, really gave Harrington at that 60-yard uh, pass play. Going to have pretty decent passing statistics. And if you, set, if you were here at the game and you watched it, he certainly did not uh, – you wouldn't think at the end of the game he was going to have that kind of uh, night. So, But to get back to the conversation we had before, we're going to see what Providence is made of coming out of that bye week because they do have to play op. One of the teams that would be favored in the region, HA being one of the other ones that's favored in the region. There's winnable games on the schedule, but I just feel like offensively they've got to get that rhythm back in because you're going to want to hold the ball against op. You're going to want to have some long drives and keep the ball out of their hands. Now, do we have op? After the break, or is it Elba? Uh, I believe it's op, but uh, we don't know. If uh, you can call in to us, uh, we'll take your <laughs> call right now and let us know. So Corey's going to look that up. We probably should have known that. So a little squib kick here, a little pooch kick for New Brockton, and it's uh, nicely done there. So uh, Providence got the ball. Eb Anderson, who uh, has a little bit of experience on offense, and he's going to stay in there. Uh, he gets it, so Providence just going to kneel on the ball here, and uh, 22 seconds to go, one more play. Well, for those of you who didn't stay with us to the end of the broadcast, unfortunately, they got bad information. And I hope they don't listen to us, but if you stay to the end, you get the correction, because we actually play next week at Op. Okay. Then we have an open week, I believe, after that, um, according right. to the schedule. Right. So, yes, we go to Op next week, uh, September 9th, um, to play the, the Bobcats. And I don't think they're quite the powerhouse that they've been. They're still a very good team, but they lost a lot of seniors last year. They're still a good team. We're going to have a hard time with them. But they're not the team I don't think they were last year. I don't want to point out that I said Op was the next game, but that may have happened. They still have Gray Jennings, the good quarterback, yeah. and they know how to run that spread offense. So uh, ranked right now, we don't know what the results of tonight's game are, but they're ranked. So uh, real opportunity for Providence. Win the games that you can win, and then you never know if you can go and you can steal a game here or there. So we'll have a real opportunity next week to see where Providence stands. As we've said before, they have seven or eight guys hurt. If they can get some of those guys back intermittently, they'll be a much better team. But they feel good about themselves tonight, winning 27-6, to take away the long pass. They really controlled most of this game. We appreciate you watching it with us here on the Scenic Cable Sports Network. For Corey Driggers, I'm Mike Bridges. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Check us out on YouTube, the Scenic Cable Network. We'll see you next time on the Scenic Cable Sports Network. Your number one source for high school sports. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network.